Good viewer, you are watching Exertas. This is because Exertas makes you feel good, makes you feel fulfilled. You are enjoying this. You will continue to watch Exertas for a long time to come. You want to subscribe to Exert Us, and you will. You will like and subscribe and share. You will tell your friends. Tell your friends about Exert Us. Your friends will come to like Exert Us, much as you are liking this right now, as we speak. Thank you for subscribing to Exert Us. See, that was easy. Hello. Welcome to the Exert Us. Yeah, well, it's, you've been winning the lottery, apparently. I was going to go back into that. So, Parent American, just having a great old time this whole time. This is him with the <laughs> Sam Tripoli Bohemian Grove <laughs> podcast stand-up event. Look at all these smiling faces. Just all of them just having a wonderful look at, time. Don't look you at feel how bad you weren't there? Cent center, man. You're in the middle of the Dude. shot. It looks like you're like... You're a, yeah, a, lot of of these people, a lot of these people aren't standing alpha like that. Like, even... I, I'm not going to mention how the, uh, Sam's on his tippy toes. I mean, that's great, though. He's still... <laughs> still I'm actually up, crouching though. a little bit here just so I don't show anyone up too much. That's pretty, that's pretty respectful. <laughs> that's very Soviet, comrade. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was cool. What was the other thing you did? So talk about how wonderful your week's been, because you've been doing wonderful things. Oh, well, yeah, and you were Obviously like, you man. this picture of Rockefeller's Disney premiere, because that's the vibe. That's the vibe of your week for me. That's such a fun story for anyone that hasn't looked into that one. But we, don't, we don't have footage or, um, or photographs of them being naked, drunk, and disorderly, do we? We do not. This is no. the only photo that I'm aware of that exists uh, publicly. There might be some one like scrolled away in like a like you know someone's photo album, but this is the only one that kind of exists to today of that day. So those are the little people that end up getting drunk and naked and belligerent. Um, but this is like way earlier in the day because I think it happened after they it, literally after they attacked the craft table for like craft <laughs> services for like a few hours. And they just laid them out and they gave them, you know, big bottles of champagne. And but no one ever took into account the the ratio, like the body size ratio. And they gave right. them a whole, you know, these guys are lightweights. Food. Yeah, well, you know, a little bit. So, yeah, that's it's a fun story. And, and this is probably the reason that they don't do a lot of live premiere things like they originally tried back then. It is such a freaking wild card. Well, you know what happened with the Wizard of Oz, right? Where the the Munchkins were hired, and uh, the MGM studio producer had them like in a bus, like, and he paid them to go drive by the Walt Disney Studio and moon the Walt Disney Studio. Like, they all had to stick their bottoms out of the bus window, like there were because there was no unionization, and like you know they were little people, so it was like a horrible. It was horrible, apparently, like the conditions for the Wizard of Oz. I, I feel like people I feel die. like the the under the rainbow thing with Chevy Chase and Carrie Fisher that movie about mm. the munch the little people in the uh, in the hotel that that's like that's like an example of like yeah this seems really weird but it was actually weirder than this 
it's like fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Like if you see a picture of him with the attorney, you know, and it's just like, yeah, they did some crazy things, but it's it's even crazier than what you saw in the movie. I think that that Under the Rainbow is probably an example of something like that. But yeah, I mean, I'm already distracted again because I got right back to the picture of you with David Icke. I mean, amazing. that's right. That was the other big thing. It was a it was that's a big a, week for whoa. me because oh, that's a, we, oh, that thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did oh, yeah. we did the live show with uh, Sam Tripoli, and then a couple days later, as I was, and the reason why I've got like two screens on here is like I still couldn't find my HDMI cable from coming back from the show, so it was like right at the tail end of this. And how the hell do you prepare for talking with David Icke? So this was like, this was top of the bucket list for sure. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Well, I mean, we should do it again because I was actually talking to David's daughter, I think it was a few months ago. And then they were saying like they wanted to arrange to do it in a few months. So I was thinking about doing this. So you should come back and do it twice, this time with a working camera, because that would probably be even more. I agree. Yeah, I've got got it all (laughs) set up again now. And he's no. got a book coming out, I think, in September, yeah. October. So it's perfect. No, this is great. Exactly. So this is huge. So what did, what do you want to talk a little bit about? Obviously, everyone should go probably watch this when they're done with this. They should watch the David Icke talk you did with Nate. I love Nate. Nate and Tony's uh, Reality Czars podcast. They're awesome. But what was this uh, conversation like? I haven't actually delved too deep into it yet. It really meant he jumped directly into top, talking about AI and video games. And he brought up the name um lucky palmer i think that's his name right is it lucky palmer or is it palmer lucky i always get those two confused uh which is why i don't i don't like people that have two first names as a first name and a last <laughs> name i always end up calling them by their last name oh you mean but you mean palmer lucky from palmer uh, see right like yeah. it seems like it would have been lucky palmer because palmer is more of a lot la- anyways at the side <laughs> tangent but um Palmer, I said lucky. Palmer one time because I was like <laughs> trying to get him to do this, like one of these podcast shows. And like, it was right at the time when like the election seasons were starting and everyone was like, so uh, like politically caustic, but you know, he's a cool guy. Like he wants you to have a video game console that will actually kill you. Right. Like he's inventing I, this thing. Dude, I agree. He, he was the leader of the VR Renaissance. Like he's yeah. the one that kicked it back into gear and was like, Hey, look, this can actually be done for a small amount of, of parts with existing technology good enough to convince us and that's you know oculus and then um oculus got purchased by meta i actually worked at a company, <laughs> one of these guys anyways like it was wild though because david it's crazy yeah brought up, uh, palmer lucky. and then apparently palmer lucky's been working on some new like meta uh you know like basically skynet in some way that like biometric data of some kind but he also i mentioned how palmer lucky was one of the ones that started the vr renaissance and he went into this really awesome analogy to how like our reality now and he was describing like wi-fi signals and stuff but how our reality right now is basically like our meat suits just imagine everyone has a vr helmet on and like everyone's got maybe like slightly different brands of vr helmets and maybe slightly different wired you know technology but that's all we're doing is we all have these vr headsets on which act as our body and it's got all these sensory inputs just like a vr thing i mean ready player one but david ike was calling it out in the 90s right Mm. yeah yeah i mean it's why the ceiling's turquoise you know good for him not really (laughs) but but he did love turquoise and so like i vibe with that that's good i mean so so that was cool and uh david what about your week what did you do or also, there's more. Oh, if you want to say my that. my week. Oh, I've just been uh, doing man- manual labor. No, I've been I've been it's I've been, I've been putting I, there's like these giant old antique windows, and uh, once a year we like ha- have to go to town, like basically like uh, taking images and putting them in a heat press and then attaching them to these big windows, and it's this whole process for this guy that sells them in Texas. He sells them at different places, but his big his big spot is Texas, so he's about to to take off i got to go back to work tomorrow for a few days and finish off the last part of that but yeah just in, in, intensive all day like like big old wooden windows and taking mostly images of like cuba a lot of cats uh bicycles cats with bicycles all kinds of things yeah, is, <laughs> is, uh, is that for that cuban restaurant or is it for just people in town you know like it's for like... people in texas mostly <laughs> Okay. It's just well, it, I'm not know, getting any like, of the connections between the Cubans, the bicycles, or the cats. It's just who where he sells them and who likes to have like really like old antique giant heavy ass windows hanging up in their barns or whatever, you know. 
Yeah, so, yeah. Cat but, whatever. <laughs> you asked me, so I'm telling you what I did. I just sent the final <laughs> movie in here somewhere. Yeah. There's got to be something. Uh, what about this? Isn't that big of a deal? But it's kind of interesting to me, kind of like, I guess, a little bit. So, like, Bill Maher, you know, he grew up his whole life in the rat race of pretending to be a suit. And, you know, he's obviously like a pervert, a proud pervert. And yeah, I don't mean that in a bad way, necessarily. I mean, you know, like, he wants to be who he is, but he also wants to smoke pot. And he couldn't do it on TV. And now he has his own podcast where he likes to smoke pot. Okay. And like, I'm, I'm pretty American about what you like to do. I have people on my show that do that. That's if you want to do what you want to do, like, just don't shoot yourself in the head, you know, please. Mm -hmm. But Steve, think of the ratings. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. But Steve-O, he says, you know, he's been cleaning the store for 16 years, which is awesome, right? Because he was surrounded by all these people that were, like, shooting themselves in the head, essentially, with drugs. Or, like, they're they're hitting themselves in the head, whatever. And he's now, I mean, look at him. He's doing pretty well. But he doesn't want to be on a show with someone who's smoking pot. And, I mean, like, what do you think about this? Because this is, like, the boundary of liberty in the Mm. weirdest way. I, f- I feel like if his show, if that was like, if it was like a Cheech and Chong kind of thing, it was called a podcast instead of a podcast, and that was like the shtick, then okay, maybe you knew what you're getting into. But otherwise, it's just, you know, it's it's not a good courtesy. It's just, what it's, is it's Bill Maher's podcast called again? Because isn't it that podcast, Bill Maher? It is him just smoking. That's the point. It's like, well, here's him. I'm just going to, here he is. Like, oh, so this, this, this wasn't chair. for his, um, his like HBO show. No, no, it's not like on his HBO show, he's just like a rabid <laughs> drug addict all the time. But no, he's like, I have my own life. I'm nearly retired. I can make my own podcast like these kids are doing. And he's got a blunt. <laughs> he's holding a blunt. And he's talking is to it, like Is that a blunt or is that just a cigar right there? No, 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 my friend. Look, look, okay. at, look at that. That's a fatty? That's a fat Peter Green. That's quite the blunt with the white owl, the man. Yeah, yeah, and this is he's yeah. like this is what his show is. I mean, his show is just him smoking pot, talking to people. And like, you know what? America, right? America. That's the thing. I don't think it's necessarily right. wrong for him to do that. It's not illegal, uh, as far as I'm concerned. He's right. It's, 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 uh, 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 if somebody makes a request, and then it's up to the person whether or not they want to be courteous. And if he doesn't want to be courteous, then okay. I don't think yeah. I don't see it as a big deal. So he I think refused. It's so Bill Maher refused. Hey Zach. Hey, are we talking about Stevo here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what a guy. You've got, you got an echo. echo. Uh, do I? Let's see. How's that? That's, that's sorry. <laughs> sorry. Is that better? Happening. Still happening. Here, here. You know what? We should, we should do. do uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. A little, a little reverb, reverb there. there. Same, Same tank. tank. Same, Same tank. tank. You got it. Nice work. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. So. Oh, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, how's that? that That's how one? you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah, it's just, it's just, live, it's just, live that just be just constantly, be constantly in, flow in flow state. state. It's, back. it's back. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it again, dude. Uh, Check. Yeah. Yeah. No? Is that better? No. 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 You're, you're, you're still, still doing, doing it. it. That's you're, so weird. You're, you're, no. no. Everybody. Everybody. Is it better? Okay, you fixed it. Okay, so yeah, so, Stevo. Yeah, oh, you did it again. I'm just gonna mute you. So Stevo comes on and says, "Don't smoke pot, please." And then Bill Maher says, "It's my show. I'm gonna smoke pot." That's basically all that happens. So then Stevo won't be on the show. Big deal. It's a big deal. Not that it's small. It's nothing. But at the same time. Isn't isn't there something there to this idea? Like he has a simple request, and like Bill Maher's done like 20, 30 years of shows without smoking pot. Like I don't know, is it like that crazy? Like is he that? I don't know, man. I'd say like he watched those old Jackass and the and the other thing that he did, the C. What was that, his show? Whatever. Um, uh, but uh, it, they, they weren't polite to people. When sure. were they polite? Like they were a bunch of jackasses. Like that was the whole thing, man. That was like their yeah, shit. But, but he's I like, oh, I'm over that now. Now, now I'm, you know, I don't know, whatever. Just like a, like a karmic repayment of some kind. <laughs> but yeah, it's the other thing. It's like to remind people what they are. You know, like, hey, you're actually just a clown. That's what you all, and that's kind of what 
uh, in order to become famous, they had to do like Steve-O. Yeah, he like sodomized himself, right? With like everything, NASA, yeah. with, with Hot Wheels co toys and things, and well, had people inspect it in medical environments to surprise them. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you think the world lost by this interview not happening? Uh. I mean, I think it's be. I think it's interesting for people that want to be famous to see what happens to people. And like, there's like Steve was an interesting character. All of those guys, they they kind of seem like rape victims that are trying to like deal with the trauma of all that stuff. And I remember like <laughs> they all I just saw, raped themselves though. Is the caveat? Well, they were. Tr you know, imagine you're like kidnapped, put in the red light district in a little window room where everyone's filming you, and like you're kind of forced to do things for money. That's kind of the deal. Like they kidnapped. I don't know. I, mean, I grew up with the original CKY videos and CK, you know, CKY 2K or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and like it didn't seem like they were acting like they were kidnapped at any yeah, point well, like that seemed like they were having a blast <laughs> yeah. yeah i think but by the time you get to like nitro circus or whatever where people are like getting head injuries on purpose you know i don't know maybe i'm missing something because i went to like nami so i saw like the dr ami presentation on like if you hit your head here this is what happens and then like you hit your head here this is what happens and then go watch nitro circus and see all these people hit their heads and then they interview them afterwards you're like wow you're like a demonstrative <laughs> You know what? I can make a very convincing <laughs> argument that this was an extension of CIA MK Ultra concussion testing to see if you know how you could trigger amnesia and other sorts of memory erasure, erasure yeah. or recalling. See, that's the thing. I was thinking to myself, I was like, it seems like maybe Alex Jones would be a better place because he still likes to choke himself out. I saw him do it on stage not that long ago. So it's like that would be a good, you know, they'd both be into it. They could choke, choke each other out, choke themselves out, you know, whatever. I can't wait to see what <laughs> Zach comes back with. It's going to be because he's going to invent a new microphone or something like that. Like it's going to be like a guy. Get a soldering iron. I, I think the other thing is like it's a physical thing. Like if you were like in the other world, like virtual reality, you can do whatever you want on the other side of the glass. So that's the other thing is we have like a heightened amount of liberty if you're in your own sphere. But when people are interacting and living in the same sphere, you know, it's like I'm going to be in the same room as you. It's secondhand smoke. Or I think, you know. It seems like a weird, th it seems like these are kind of interesting concepts because around the world, they would not look at it this way. Like if in China, so this is, it seems like it's a bizarre Americanism. Like where else well, in the world could this happen? happen? There's, There's like, like a, a, it's, it's, yeah, the whole, uh, no, go ahead, no, go ahead and say it, and say it, and it and then we'll, then just, we'll just, wait, wait. Damn, Damn it, good. good. <laughs> All right, Zach, well, I was, come back with I was gonna, mic. I was gonna say that, uh, there, there's, there's an, an interesting, interesting aspect, aspect of it here. here. Weird. Because uh, it's so weird hearing your own voice. Like, <laughs> um, but like it, like Steve-O could have worn a mask, right? So it doesn't seem like it was about inhaling the smoke. It was probably about being in the same room and having like the trigger there and the original temptation there, which also seems like that would have extended to like a Zoom meeting as well even if it were a virtual right. audience, you see someone like and you know that they're drinking or smoking and you're recovering i don't see how that's any different than if you're in the same room and right. you've got like a gas mask you know and we've got masks now because you know thankfully for that sexy thing that happened in 2019 but uh like so that was another option so now it's almost like well would you just not pay attention to someone like couldn't you just turn the screen on i don't know there's like a lot of interesting things which almost make it seem like it's making a stand not as much as i'm worried about my own temptation it's more like i want to i want to be perceived as being so counter to what you think that i used to be that i won't even watch bill maher smoke a crappy blunt of some like mexican right. weed. Hey, doesn't that Thomas, take how uh, you bring up sin and on no keep going sorry doesn't that take like the lord's prayer to another level of like lead us not into temptation that you're literally going to like isolate yourself from anything that could conceivably tempt you or is it is it a temptation thing or is it just he doesn't want to inhale the smoke so, so he's like, well again he could have worn a gas mask he's worn it before we've seen him wear one on the I've show seen him wear a gas mask before That's a true. monk in isolation is broken by their first temptation so like if he's like not really good at dealing with the world and i think a lot that is a case with a lot of people they maybe you spend your whole life being good because you're in a monastery and then you go to vegas you know you've seen these tibetans around the world getting super drunk i've seen it i'm just saying i've seen some mm -hmm. monks get super hang, you know loose um but then you think about i guess because if you're saying this i hate i was like i'm not going to talk about this is literally funny because earlier today i said to myself i'm not going to talk about synanon today 
I don't know why. I was just I saw a little bit of the Synanon HBO doc yesterday. And I was thinking about it. I was like, well, we don't really need to bring that up. But it seems so relevant in American culture and around the world. And the way that, especially with addiction, because addiction works by getting you to have some sort of a chemical response that tricks your body, right? Like usually you're supposed to have some sort of reward complex for doing something good <laughs> in the world. Like, you know, like you make a child happy, you see like a smile in a woman's face, like an old lady, you walk across the street. There's like places for chemical responses. But with drugs, you can like say, hey, even if I'm starving, even if I'm, you know, in America or the Soviet Union or someplace, I can uh, I can be happy if I take this drug that'll change the way I feel. You know, you can move on beyond that. Um, I kind of believe that unironically, by the way. Yeah, well, you, that's what drugs are for. They're drugs you can work and you can like people can have Adderall and clean their room and like go to school and learn nonsense. It's not important. And get or you could do a State of the Union speech. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that yeah. you otherwise couldn't, you wouldn't be up for. You know, I'm not sure if that was Adderall or Triple Cat, but we'll find out in the Bath Salt Report someday. I think the thing though with Synanon is you train people to have negative responses. So you can see it also in music. One of the ways it's interesting to study drug culture in the United States is music, right? Biopharmacology affects like both when they're on the drug and then the generations coming off the drug and like what hat like cocaine mm -hmm. did something to your ears and crack, but also just coming off of uh, heroin. Like heroin makes weird kind of rock music, but off of heroin makes an even weirder kind of rock music. It kind of anger because there's like a physical pain that they're getting from no longer having the thing. It's not enough that it's making them feel better it's making them feel dr dramatically worse and then they play these psychological games are you familiar with sending on like they would scream at each other right yeah dude, dude, dude there's a, one of my favorite little uh tangential notes on sending on is that i heard that the name came from someone wanted to say seminar but they didn't know the, the like the proper word for seminar they just kind of knew what it sounded like so it came up with a sending on um which i don't know i think that's like a, like a glorious uh, origin story for something that turns into as you know basically right. a pyramid scheme slash mk ultra slash uh behavioral you know like child kind of rearing technology right i feel there was i think there was like a, they say it's a nonsense word but i never believe that you know what i mean when says, someone tells you something is a nonsense word they're telling you don't investigate that part right. I, agree. I, see I see i just like that's like that's, that's like david bowie with station to station or the beatles with sergeant pepper <laughs> they're like those were just drug albums i don't know what was going on Weird you don't want to wanna comment on one magical movement from Tattoo to Malkut? No, no, no. I was high as fuck. I don't Thank know. Thank you for nothing. Yeah, but Anon, we know you got the anonymous thing. And then synchron so synchroni synchronicity, like I see that. Sure, you got center, seminar, all those things, but sin anon. I just see synchronicity. And also the idea of sin, probably to some extent, because they're thinking that they were, you know, an, like an Al Anon, or no, sorry, an Alcoholics Anonymous kind of group like the guy who started it was like a former AA guy and they're talking about their higher power but they're doing these weird gestalt processes which associate this anger and hate and so you could do that with cannabis right like if you were to be obsessed with cannabis like probably lock somebody in a uh like um like a latrine you know what I mean with the cannabis around for like three days, I don't know, or something horrible. I'm just saying, don't do this. But if you were to make someone have a really traumatic association with cannabis, so that from now on, it's just they associate with the smell of bile and death, uh, or being hostile. Clockwork orange, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, like, no, yeah, yeah. This is just clockwork yeah. orange, right? So, I mean, it's kind of interesting because we can do this. We do this. People do this all the time. And here's a guy who's not done this, and he's still obsessed in a sense he just can't That's think about this thing. Dude, like an elephant i just happened head. to see a video earlier today that looked like it was maybe from the 80s of these of these two people discussing marijuana as um that basically the mind control doesn't work as well when with with marijuana and they were like we're not advised we're not like promoting marijuana but just so you know there's like you know brainwashing someone isn't quite as easy with marijuana i was like huh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a certain amount of sense. I mean, you know, I think also because if you get used to the changes in spaces. <clears throat> hey, Zach, is it working? Hey, yeah. Can you hear me now without oh, echoes? Can we hear ourselves? Way better. No, it's it's way better. Yeah, way better. Cool. Yeah, I think I just had to restart. Weird. All right, you've got so much to catch up on. You've oh yeah, I I think I've I've been largely hearing it. Uh, I think I think Steve is a little fragile. Yeah. Mm. Right. Dare dare I say? Um, I mean. If even when you're working whatever program or California sober or whatever, ultimately you have to uh, 
people are doing stuff around you. You, I don't know. I, I, I guess Bill Maher, maybe he's a little rude and just gonna like blow his hits in his face or something. I don't, maybe that's the fear. <laughs> that's the thing about Bill, you know? Yeah, <laughs> could be. I feel like yeah, if we did an online podcast, I wonder if he would handle that. You know, because the fact that he's gonna smoke it in the same room as him isn't cool necessarily but not smoking that. weed or making the these kind of statements seems to be the new cool edgy thing like oh what or you know when snoop dogg yeah. made made his uh he started selling a smokeless like uh heater or whatever right. but he, he, yeah yeah or there's, there's definitely that rescind like there's a vibe i've been seeing you know um alex stein went to texas universities and talked to students and saw like a lot of kids don't and haven't ever done drugs because they're in especially you're not in california and god i'm sure now in california it's just the same as everywhere you're afraid of fentanyl and all these things and so these kids are not doing any drugs because they think it's going to kill them like it's the new drug aids you know every oh, always grow mushrooms for for microscopy well, purposes only. There's Dude, definitely I'll, I'll people you. that there's definitely people that do it, but I think it's a grand proportion <laughs> more that are completely straight edging out this generator. Yeah. Are coming. In, in in California, you could be in somebody's home and you're like, you know, do you care if I smoke weed? Oh, absolutely okay. Go for it. Light up. And if you wanted to smoke a cigarette, it's like fucking <laughs> end of the world you know you can't even do it outside yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get off the roof. <laughs> but no i, I agree with that see. though man i mean maybe this is like just one of those justifications but a house where someone smokes weed all the time versus a house where someone smokes cigarettes all the time it's like night and day freaking difference oh totally i mean I, i'm a certain mentality myself <laughs> like I got, I'm, I'm 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 70s in spirit 90s in my state of mind but like it's like you know but i i, I do love that it's like i used to smoke inside and like Ye yesterday marked books, six you know? years of not smoking cigarettes for me nice work just yeah, inside see, feel... or or at all at all yeah no i i i uh yeah it's been six whole years of not smoking and i used to smoke inside a ton i smoked like two two and a half packs a day at one point what, like, what uh, age did you start um i started probably when i was 19 or 20 and i started with cloves Oh, you see, those things make your fucking lungs bleed. Yeah, so I had to start smoking cigarettes. I was like, oh, these things are bad for me. I better start smoking cigarettes. That's crazy. Wow. And so I, I know it's interesting, though, because addiction is a major issue. Like, what do you do when now you've got, I mean, tobacco is more addictive, a lot of people say, than like heroin or most, a lot of drugs, right? It's harder to I've, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that. Well, it's so, less expensive uh, for the time being. We'll see how that changes soon. But yeah. Hmm. But yeah, it seems like it, it's really <laughs> difficult. So I also just don't know. I mean, what Bill Maher is supposed is Bill Maher supposed to quit, or is he supposed to continue to do what he wants to do? Like, why, why would can't people both? Well, like, if for one episode, like, can he literally just not smoke for one episode to interview or this use guy? a vape or take a gummy or like? So yeah, I feel like people choose. that the people that wrote this entire premise are like a little. I, I don't know. Are we, we, you know, what what is the deal? It's kind of silly. I think Bill Maher could be fine. J j you know, considering all the other things he's ever done, yeah, it just seems like it's a weird thing to say all of a sudden. It, well, what's weird? It is feels like a Larry, like a curb your enthusiasm. So, sorry. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does. <laughs> what is really it? We've got, we've got like in 2024, we've got Steve O virtue signaling. It's just the wit and like straight edge virtue signaling. So yeah, was that on your bingo card? It was not on my bingo yeah, card. It, yeah, it, no. was, it was for me, actually, because after, you know, what's the B Viva La Bam hunt mm. down? Like they were hunting him down in the woods and everything like that. <laughs> he's so having a hard time. I would well, love to no, see a Steve him. like minor threat <laughs> cover album at this point. Yeah. Make they caught him I'm a person just like through. you, but I've got better things to do. It's I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Doesn't Steve-O keep the? He has. This is the Steve-O haircut. The Sinan yeah, haircut. It is though. Yeah. yeah that is minor I've, threat. That's actually that, a real image of minor threat on stage. Totally. I believe. Right. I just feel like there's something to this. Also, this idea that like if you lose something, <laughs> then you can get people obsessed and you can put them into like this. Like who is the uh keeper who is the uh, handler of steve-o that's like helping make sure steve-o is constantly surrounded and sobered all the time you know that seems very interesting mm -hmm. too like you can take someone who's addicted to drugs and be like oh well now your life is so dangerous let me watch over you which is what we hear all the time like brian wilson um and who's are you're doing it you're becoming mighty you know mm. Gene yeah i feel for Richard brian wilson his wife just died very very recently oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, that's brutal 
I have I, to. I just have to say that uh, David M paid for a box saga. He did. Uh, super oh, chat. Really? Somebody had to say it. Thanks. For yeah, we me. we just bulldozed right over it. I really love you all. Here we'll just. Uh, this is the only right thing to do. Someone's <laughs> going to the beach. Friends don't let friends smoke mid. I read that as middies in my mind for it. Yeah, middies. <laughs> He's in recovery. He could relapse. Dog saga. saga. Truth is a collection of lies. Now that's box saga, not bong saga. Right. Okay. Your parents are children that will die. Sounds of shape and form. I forgot what that part is. Dave's got your corner. I don't think there's anything too bad in it. They're actually all just like nice and beautiful. It's a good feeling. Is that a human being or is that more AI from you guys? What is the yeah. box soccer song? It's AI. Well, I wrote it is most AI? of the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I had to make my own, uh, not in competition, but in compliment to, uh, which is also available on iTunes and Spotify and just called Box Yours is good. Box Yours is like a British rap song. It sounds like South London. It's like, Box Soccer, Box Soccer. Yeah. It's pretty good. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, the British music... rappers get upset. Doesn't it kind of seem strange to you? Because it's like they're they're British, right? Like, so they're you know it's like young man, young man, simmer down now, S stay calm, sir. Pour like, it I just down. Can't, I just can't quite. It doesn't young lad. have the same. Yeah. We see Zach. Sorry. Okay. Uh, oh no, I I I, I uh, yeah, British British rappers. That's a weird thing. <laughs> I don't really have a hate. I have a problem with them, but. It's... Dude, Fre French rappers it. are sick. Like that's one of some of my favorite yeah. non uh English rap is French rap. Yeah. French rappers will wear you as a coat. It's true. <laughs> like, there's a little bit more. Swedish rap's pretty rapper. cool too. I know some Swedish rappers. It's amazing. Ah, oh, dude, Helsinki's super hardcore right now. You heard about that twelve year old killer child? No. I don't mean to make this like a contempt issue episode, but like I just was like the news is pretty crazy. I don't know. There's this kid in Switzerland. Definitely and, uh, crazy. And Iceland, Helsinki comes in with a gun, and they don't really have a lot of school shootings there. So they're kind of like, they're calling him the killer child, which is like, imagine if you called a school shooter in America the killer child. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, I feel like this is American culture just spreading. So I don't even know if Helsinki's allowed to take credit for this. This is just like, you know, they just shot like their own version of a Terminator movie, pretending like they invented <laughs> the whole thing. The like, Swedish it's still film. our franchise. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I don't know, school shootings are spreading. So what is that in terms of like planting narratives? You know, like you're saying, are we planting this idea that every place is going to have, you know, a killer child or what is a killer you're, child even? Well, you were you were in high school when Columbine happened, right? Were, were you, uh Andreas? I was I was just, was I? What year was was Columbine? I think it was just before I got it to high school. It was 99. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was still, I was like South Park. I was yeah. South Park kids era. As, I was in the well, same county as them. I think it was like a oh really? Grade. Oh yeah, you're in fucking Colorado, Jesus. But uh, dude, I remember after yes. after Columbine happened, they installed barbed wire around my school in uh, Aptos High, wow. and then I remember that the cops all of a sudden uh, had guns, and I'd never seen the cops with guns at on school grounds before. And then eventually they stopped. They, they weren't uh, carrying for long, but it was just. My kind of, I was just like, so wait, so this incident happens in Colorado, and now we have to experience this really tightening up, like energetic. Like it felt like I felt very restricted in school. I was looking out the window one day in class. No one else saw this that I know of. I was looking out the window and I saw this guy, uh, two guys uh, skipping school by getting over the fence like we had used to do all the time and so they put up that barbed wire and the first guy made it through he made it over and then the second guy got stuck in the barbed wire and was just like <laughs> hanging there like back and forth like freaking out trying to get out of it God. and i was just like and i and he wasn't like screaming because he didn't want to get caught 
but it was just like and it just it looks so bad it looks so painful and i was just like oh my god i for the first time ever i really feel like i'm in a prison compound and it was just like that's the vibe of my high school now and this is our answer to what happened in columbine like of all the things that you could do in response to what had happened that was that was the thing also it was right it was shortly after columbine that i probably shared this on here before but yeah i i got interviewed by the santa cruz sentinel and uh they didn't include anything that i said uh they they had a whole fat like pre-planned narrative and they put my face my not just my face they put me on the front cover of the paper with like i wore like a dog collar and i had my trench coat and so they mm -hmm. came up to me in the quad and they said they 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 asked me if i listened to marilyn manson and i was like oh yeah you bet I was like huge Marilyn Manson fan, and they were like, oh, can, we, "Can we interview you?" And yeah, every everything that I said was completely um, not included in in the article, and that was my first like experiential uh, lesson in like, wow, the media can just lie, and the way that they can have their narrative pre planned, and they'll just use you. And it was like there was nothing I could do about it. Like if I tried to say that's not what I said, they would have just said, "Yeah, it is. What you can't take it back, you know, or whatever." But it was like, yeah, I had teachers be like, "I didn't realize." It was so hard for you here. I was like, "What the fuck?" I told them that I felt like if I knew one person in any group, I could walk. I could walk up, and it wasn't like a big deal. I was like, "I don't see it as that that tribal or whatever they wanted." You know the deal with this photo, right? Like they found this train track, and then they found a baby, and they put mud on him, and then the baby was sitting there laughing. So then they pinched the baby, or they stuck him with a needle so he would cry, so they could get the photo for Bloody Saturday. Yep. For that. it's the Jackie Cooper law. The guy, the kid in Treasure Island, they needed him to cry and they threatened to shoot his dog. They told him they'd shoot his dog if he didn't cry. And so he starts crying. They got, and you can see it in the movie. But they got the shot, right? They got the shot. But they got the shot. Didn't they? All right, well, that's, that's important. That's different. Yeah. I mean, Treasure Island wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for that scene. Damn but the thing is, is that, yeah, they changed the laws in Hollywood after that to, to keep that from happening again. You know, no, that's like, good. That kind of no, thing, not, you know? not too, uh, too soon for Milo and Otis, though. No. Right, right, right. But that's animals. It's different. It took longer for the they animals. They don't have souls. We started with the humans. We're like, that's really but bad. Souls Eventually, like it'll be robots. We're not going to be allowed to abuse robots <laughs> on, in, in movies. <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel like I feel like playing the narrative with Columbine. I remember when I was taking like German in, uh, class over the hill, I would go to this like high school building, and it was probably 99, 2000, and they had, um, it looked like a concrete bunker. It was just, there was no plants. It was all brand new concrete everywhere. It was just blast proof bulletproof uh, glass with these shatter uh, curtains that would black out curtains that they put over the windows. So the classrooms would, they'd light it from the inside and you couldn't see outside and you wouldn't want to anyway, cause it looked like mm -hmm. the worst of like the death star, but the, de the blast curtains in case the windows were to be exploded. And you're like, wow, this is weird. Like what the heck kind of vibe is this place? And luckily I was going to like a mountain school in elementary school. So they were, hicks and detached and you know i was okay but when i got to socal high school socal high school was what 2003 i think and so they had um it was an open campus we had a chinese restaurant down in the village i used to sell dvds and cds oh, to the yeah. teachers, and the teachers uh, Cy money. siam star of siam that was a Thai restaurant, Golden Buddha, which was where you had like all the oh the Golden Buddha right next door. Okay, yeah, both yeah. of those places. But to get there, you'd have to go through that church that used to be a porn theater, and so everyone <laughs> right. who went to Soko High School, like you have to imagine, like just the fact that the porn theater was shut down in like 1997 right. or something like that. That must have been crazy, you know, because like right in the back, you had to be walking behind <laughs> all these crazy drunk people that were coming in and out of the little porn theater. I mean, so I don't know. It was different. It was a different world. I'm pretty sure. Um, I just feel like the Columbine thing, though, was surpassed in level by the ubiquity of September 11th. When September 11th happened, that's when it was really everything all the time. Like, yeah, everything's being monitored all the time. Everyone's being watched if they're in and out all the time. That was the – September 11th really was horrifying. Yeah, it's, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? I mean, that's the, that's the thing is it's like with a lot of this stuff, it's like the way we tighten up when tragedies strike and you're like, you'd think that they would be like, maybe that's part of the issue too. Like maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know, whatever, who knows? This can't, it's yeah. I mean, with <laughs> September 11th, you know, it was a lot of the different things that they did were 
again, like the digitization was starting, like a lot of systems, right? Like, all these schools that we went to had paper notes or private personal computer notes that weren't fully digitized yet until like the late nineties. I think that, was yeah, that, that was started. the weird, weird in betweenness of it. Yeah. I, I told you that, uh, I ended up at some theater cast party where the two shooters were there. Right. Really? I think I told you that David, didn't I? One point. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So I, I guess I met them. Like, I don't, you know, I don't really like, <laughs> like re re really more, what? more. Yeah. It was like, elaborate. when was that? Was this before or after they were famous? They were, yeah, it was obviously before, um, <laughs> it was kind of a one shot deal. Um, but yeah, they, they, uh, were there in the capacity. It was like a, like a, after party for another school's theater program. And so mm -hmm. like the theater kids were kind of close knit and they were like different friends of friends. And so, uh, I was friends with a lot of theater kids in golden. And so it was the after party for, I think it was Lakewood, which there's like Littleton Golden. They're all in Jefferson County and there's all these towns that are adjacent. And so it was like, mm -hmm. they, they were at this cast party, like with a, with their friend, but they weren't really participating with the other people. So it was like, that was the noticeable thing that was, was that more of the, like, Oh yeah, those were those weird kids with trench coats that were like very into their own thing. Cause you, yeah. you can see like videos that they took and movies that they took. They were very into like themselves and the thing that they were doing. Like they, they were very much like into making these weird videos and thought that they were, yeah, they were very, uh, they thought very highly of themselves. Apparently, they weren't even really into Marilyn Manson. They were like they were, they were more into Cam like, to FDM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, the media went crazy with that, and they were just like Marilyn Manson, Marilyn Manson. They must have said it as many times they said Osama bin Laden after nine yeah, eleven. I mean, like, at oh, the same it's... time, it was like all that. Yeah, it was like insane. All the kids in anything, it was like extreme. It was just like all the oh, trends. You could swear that high school were into the wall. <laughs> they were all wearing like the Pink Floyd patch from the sure. wall. Sure, you know? totally. So, yeah. And that was kind of like the the media not knowing what to do Manson. after the implementation of the V chip, and like after Clinton was in the office, like, well, yeah, we're not really going with that narrative anymore <laughs> like y you know yeah like or, y you know th there was the the tipper gore um yeah she was part of the pmc or whatever Wait, wasn't there like a like a v chip episode of south park where it's like an implant did they predict Neuralink on south park i need to i can't remember was that what it was or my it was something what, what was similar it? to that yeah the v where chip like was this thing where yeah like no they, they like yeah exactly like you you like can't you can't curse <laughs> Which is also like, a clockwork yeah. orange, right? That's the same yeah. idea. Yeah, right? it's very clockwork much orange. in the same ballpark. I don't know if this is a fair thing, but you remember Gus Van Sant's movie uh, Elephant about Elephant, the school yeah. shooting. It's probably the best school shooting movie. I don't know how many there are, <laughs> but it's pretty good uh, for a school shooting movie. And in it, one of the things I noticed is at the very beginning here, like, hey, where's, this, where's the scene with the dad? The dad who's drunk at the beginning, and the reason why he's like got all these problems at school, his dad is the actor who played George Bush in That's My Bush. So oh, this that's my bush. Oh, One my. of these days, I'm going to punch, punch you, in, you the in the face. <laughs> it's yeah. what his tagline was to bar oh, Laura, Laura Bush. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a that's a play on honeymooners, right? Of one right. of these days, Alice smack boom yeah. through the looking which glass. Which is or a whatever. Trey Parker, yeah. Matt Stone, which is right back to South Park in the V chip because mm -hmm. Trey Parker mm -hmm. made that's my bush. So there's that. <laughs> but I feel like there's something interesting with the V chip also because you know the British government invented. The they v -chip. also made that Mormon play, right? Yeah, right. the, true. Book of Mormon. Sure. But you know what yeah. the thing the Which thing with that is that is that George W actually liked that show. He was asked about it at one point and he was just like, Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. He, just, yeah. he just like <laughs> completely like didn't give it a was fuck. Funny. You know? It was a great That's show. Where he does, like, the wings, he takes ecstasy and he's got like the wings and he's at a rave. Was, yeah. Like, Dude, that's that's, that's the thing is that you, is that that was one of the differences, and I'm not I'm not Speaking the highly of George 11th. W. because there's other problems <laughs> with George W. Yeah, you can't I mean, find it's so ridiculous. It's, it's hard it's to find show. this show. Uh, I found it. I can get you. I can oh, you did? It you have it? Yeah, Dude, I, I went looking for it. Okay, we have to talk after the show. It's a hugely I've been wanting to watch show. It. Yeah. And the oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm not even thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I may be thinking of that show with George's response, or I may be thinking about the baby one, the, the cartoon with the where they're all babies. Oh, and little like, bush. and little Dick, bush. yeah, little bush little and bush. Dick Cheney's like drinking their blood and shit. Like that's the, the show bush I, I, I can't find. By Donna Carey, which links it to wow. the Simpsons. That's intense, right? 
So that's uh, a hard show to, to in find. In the first it's, episode yeah. of That's My Bush, he's trying to get everyone to get along in America, and he realizes he can't get everyone to get along in America because he's got the feminists, the pro-abortion, pro-choice people, and he has the pro-lifers who's like this person who survived an abortion who's like a 40-year-old fetus who can't see. And he's like, that person's never going to get convinced to be pro-choice. And like, so it's like, oh, poor George, what are we going to do? We can't. And then Israel and then Palestine, he's like trying to get everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, right. it's making pasta. It's adorable. I think that there, there's only one Trump thing that's like that. It's not a show. It's the Funny or Die movie. And as far as I know, as it stands, the only Funny or Die movie where where Johnny Depp plays Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, it's, it's called no, The Art of the Deal. Didn't Funny yeah. or Die also You, you did a sync with that, didn't you? I did. I played it with yeah. Roger Waters. Is this the life we really want? It's so yeah. good. I thought <laughs> yeah, it's got they... Alf in it, and it's got uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd shows up as his character from Back to the Future. And Funny like, or Die yeah. also did I, Steve, Marty? which is the greatest uh, Steve Jobs movie, mm-hmm. right? Oh, and... I haven't seen that one. I want to see that. Most of the Funny or Die movies are shot in a week, which is pretty sweet also. So the okay. amount of time they spent doing them is like very small. But that one's pretty great. Hmm. Um, I just that the V chip thing though, just the idea that the government of you know didn't ask people, do you want a V chip or not? They like studied trends and they're like, well, really, if a V chip yes. were to exist, it would answer all of these subliminal subconscious desires of our populace. So we should you've seen that Bernays uh, documentary where they go yeah, deeply yeah, yeah. I- I- into that S- and in the 90- century of the self goes into the V chip. Yeah, and then so what the, part four or whatever. Yeah, so they're yeah, talking so. about in the nineties and ninety four where yeah, they, 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 it was the first election where they're utilizing all these phone banks to gain all this data <laughs> on what people's biggest concern was. And the majority of the like people that were women uh, at home that they they you know were willing to answer the phone and take the survey said that they mm-hmm. they were really caught up about the you know Jerry Springer and their kids watching all these things that were inappropriate, right? Right. Because it was you know generationally it was uh, a big big difference. The tides had changed. And so the Clinton administration had the rare gift of the ability to o- offer the solution to the problem presenting, you know, the majority of uh, women on both sides of the well, aisle, was, Democrats was, or Republican. It was, it was the, it, the, it was they, the they found party. the problem. It was and la- created it was a labor, the solution. It was a labor party with uh, Tony Blair who did it actually mm-hmm. with the help of the Bristol University and I think I forget. Well, there, no, there's the phone bank that was actually in Denver, Colorado that was calling oh, around for for I I know this only because it was specifically here and there's wow. this large phone banking operation that was done all around the country during mm-hmm. the the ninety uh, what six election. Mm. Wow. That's yeah, you know what? I, I I seriously wonder when I'm looking at the polls, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I was like, are they like just calling landlines and that's what we're looking at? We're like, oh, who do people support? That's a lot of it. That is a is lot it of it. Just fucking landlines. And you're like, who the fuck is answering their landline when it's not a number that they know, especially like these See days. So people. it's like, yeah, I totally. I'm just like, is that what we're looking at when we're getting a sense of where pe- what people and, are and though, like, like the Trump, people Trump at the malls? Do the- what was it? Biden had the uh, text uh, 33303 or something like that, which was like, I laughed when I first saw it. And now I met or I remember the number because it's so obvious and it's like a visual and it's threes and zeros. And apparently like then now they have all of these people's cell phone numbers and they could say, oh, yeah, just get the cell phone number. and We'll give you a free drink or we'll give you a discount. Oh, my God, like dude. I don't know this one. Is this the, the, the one for missing time? This was for text. Uh, the Biden administration, like the Biden campaign before biden was president and it was like he used yeah it's crazy it's dude crazy. dude my my brother like got a got a thing in the mail when he was like like right when he turned uh what was it 18 or whatever and it was like uh with a name that he'd only used once in his life and it was to fill out a baskin robbins like thing to like contest and like it was a military like let like join the military letter and it was like had that name with his actual address because he had his address in the uh, in the thing he filled out from Baskin Robbins. So you know that <laughs> Baskin Robbins gave those names and addresses <laughs> out to like the military. And it was like there's no other explanation. It was like in the 70s when he was a little kid, he used this made up name, and he's like, "What the fuck?" Or, or the recruiters like t- like took the fishbowl of entries for like your you, you know to win a free scoop of ice cream. And they're like. Oh. <laughs> 
And then they'll wait, they'd they'd hold on to it, and they're like, they see how old he is, because that was part of the the thing, it's like he said his age. So it's like all these years later, it's like right when he turns 21, they're like, wow, that was like a long game on recruitment there. 31 (laughs) flavors, 26 months. (laughs) (laughs) We got you. Is Larry David's new... Like finale going to be that he goes to jail? That's he's just going to like do Seinfeld right? Oh, yeah, yeah, over, over the, the water, water bottle. Yeah. I was wondering that myself. Yeah, I don't know what angle they're going to do. The first episode of this season, though, I'm pretty sure they're referencing Elon Musk, where they had the guy, the the super rich guy who's got the mansion, and then he's like South African, and then uh, Larry David's friend is like, "What the fuck, this guy's." South Africa, he's he's white. How's he? And right. He's like so. Then it's it sparks this this kind of communication from Larry David, where he's like, you know, maybe sometime I go with you to Africa, you know, because that's like your homeland, you know, and like you have this special connection to the place. And then you come with me to Israel, and then we can kind of like understand each other better through like our, you know, like it's like, and I was like, hmm, that's really weird, considering Elon Musk has this whole thing about wanting to like connected to the Raelianism. If you think if you entertain. Mm-hmm. That, that connection is more than just like being an honorary member but if he's like if there's like a, a collusion element there of the birthright the african birthright thing so i'm like because they're all about that so i was like and so and he's like i'm an alien trying to get home like he has this whole like trip around that like you find articles do you think apparently do you think elon musk has had claude virilian over at a barbecue i'm sure <laughs> Do you think he has uh, it? Do you want to place bets? I feel like I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that that was that that was the subliminal communication that first episode of the most recent season of um, of, of Curb is hmm. that like this this is a whole like Elon Musk's whole trip where you're like oh the white South African and like the birthright reference it's kind of hmm interesting yeah hmm. also like recently like the one where his uh, ex lover has had a transgender surgery. Yeah, That's pretty interesting. Ken and Kendra. He's Is like, Ken... no, I didn't have sex with Ken. And, I had yeah, sex it's... with Kendra. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> like this, this is, a, of course, the last season. Like, he, I don't feel like you could say these things and expect to have much of a career if you're young. So he's like, all right. Well, I, just... I, I mean, as far as like, yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's 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 even. I don't know. It's funny. He's he he's great at. Uh, he's a great writer. That idea of being like the trans power. Like now, this person who was the woman who felt powerless under her boss is now the power over her boss, kind of thing. <laughs> and it's Bruce Springsteen because Bruce is the boss, you know. So there's yeah, no, there's the <laughs> there's I'm multiple sure. levels. It's like he he writes kabbalistically almost. Yeah, there seems like there's something to that. I don't know. What do you think about Taiwan? Like recently, there's also that. I I don't need to only go again into contemporary stuff, but I was thinking about it because. You know, they're having all these environmental disasters. Mass, massive earthquake is going on in Taiwan. And this is right when Biden's going and talking uh, with China and Taiwan about, like, future plans and events. Like, it seems like some crazy stuff's going on. Dude, 7.5 earthquake is pretty bad. Wow. That's a big... Look at this bridge shake. Dang. That would suck. How big was the 89 quake again? I can't remember. Uh, 89. So, I think it was 7. 7.9. Quake. I think it was 7. 7. What was it? Uh, the what is the Richter birthday. scale? Six point nine. So this is worse than the eighty nine earthquake, and they're on the yeah. That's that's kind yeah, of pretty wild, man. And so I don't know. It's crazy. Also crazy timing, just in terms of like what's going on in the world. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the leaves are falling down on the thing. The the eighty nine earth earthquake was the first time as a child I registered a synchronicity. Uh, where I, I saw the Bay Bridge break in the middle, and my, my and I had just been at Van's shoe store like before, shortly before the quake, and like saw this like cardboard cutout of Jose Canseco, and it said the Battle of the Bay, and my dad explained to me like what the Battle of the Bay was, and he's like, you see, you got Oakland and San Francisco, they're like right across from each other, and they're going to battle it out, and then I was like, and then I watched the Bay Bridge break in the middle as soon as we got television back, like a few days later or whatever it was. And I saw it break and the car is going over the side. I was like, okay, that's the Bay Bridge. And I was like, why is that the Bay Bridge? It connects Oakland and San Francisco. And I was like, and it breaks in the middle during the game. So I was just like, wow. that was, and I was like, is anyone else seeing this? And I was like, you know, I mean, that was 89. I was born in 81. So you, like, like you don't think anything of it almost. You're, 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 yeah, you're like, I mean, you, maybe you think more about it even afterward. You're like, it was like, no, it made sense. Like, yeah, you're going to have the Bay, the war between the, <laughs> yeah like the the ch- the children probably could see it better uh than the adults could uh, you know it seemed like like because everyone was so like 
caught up in like the the horrificness of a giant earthquake that they're not like relating to it analytically or like objectively it's just like there's so you can't there's a force from the trees type of thing you know but like that was weird dude that was really weird that's I got, a, I got an engineering yeah. question. I don't know if any of you guys that, like know anything about structural engineering, but is it like when all these um a little bit? I did Odyssey the Mine and we'd build like the bridges. Yeah, oh my god, I did that too. That was a, I thought that was I know, I know Jed feel can't melt steel beams, but uh, I feel yeah, also living ahead. in Santa Cruz, like the earthquake <laughs> in Santa Cruz knocked down all of the brick buildings, and we lived in like geodesic mm. domes and inflatables downtown until they rebuilt it 20 years later. <laughs> So. Right. <laughs> well, I'm just curious, how come more people don't build their buildings like we did the Twin Towers so that if something bad happens, it just falls like nicely and neatly into its own little footprint? Yeah, it seems the, like the that's the most thing. convenient way to build buildings. Why was it only the Twin Towers that were built that way? Are all buildings built that way and they just don't always do that? Is the uh, point that there, there's a lot of different building and arch, uh, engineering and architectural <laughs> techniques that have been implemented over the last 50 years over the last 25 years over the last 10 years so it just, well, it's but there's the different concerns and different I'd things that are happening now go right to the beginning carnegie mellon so oh, sorry carnegie when he was uh the he was a smooth operator you know that, that oh yeah smooth operator smooth he's really good operator. at he's really good at morse code and so if you're really good at morse code that's where that comes from you would be like coast smooth to operate, coast smooth and operator. down to chicago <laughs> he ended up he ended up uh buying a bunch of, during the 1870s uh economic collapse buying a bunch of well b buying and building machinery for steel manufacturing and at a time when no one saw any value to it and he said okay and he just had it running 12 hour shifts and the next 12 hours 24 hours a day uh non-stop until the machines broke and then he would buy new machines and he just produced so much steel right and he knew that america was gonna be rebuilt out of steel all the buildings all the bridges all the roads everything was going to be rebuilt but they also knew at that moment that things were not to be torn down to be rebuilt right and so the beginning of this time that's when they start building the and you see it like all the original buildings are when they're in the 20s are bombing a building to take it down it comes straight down it's because they engineer it for that purpose like they know that they can right it Al down. although if you follow the work of um judy wood where she basically she she's she's not making an argument for energy weapons she's like led to energy weapons through deduction if you follow her pro her process you know but um you know she would ba ma basically make the argument that with the exception of building seven the two other buildings really don't follow what we would see in any standard demolition yet she also makes the argument that the official narrative is even more ridiculous so she's just like she's left in a place, and so and then there's also all these reports of energy weapons being used at that time previously in Gaza and in Iraq as well, uh, where like just uh, basically it, it's it's something that like you know a neutron bomb will leave the buildings and destroy the organisms, so it kills organic life but leaves buildings standing. But with these kind of energy weapons, it seems like it's like the opposite of that, where it destroys material, but leaves the organic life un, unaffected. So there's like that row of trees at ground zero that's like unsinged next to a row of cars that are burnt to a crisp. And so like, and then there's like the, uh, I, how many survivors on the second story of Tower 2 um, who describe light coming in from above shortly after an entire fucking enormous building went straight down on top of them like I, I forget i think there's 10 there's actually a, a canadian documentary on those survivors in from the second story of tower two it's so bizarre i mean it could make sense something like that even with standard physics you figure like so all this melted and molten and flaming and the basically like think of all the plastic from all those floors above so you basically have like napalm going down these channels and so like yeah as it's structurally melting you're just getting like a light source of well, like everything heating up and burning no like. no no no, no. she's he, they're saying that there is nothing above them mm. so light coming in through like from the sky so like uh hmm. yeah it's 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 crazy but it's true okay and so and, and her whole thing is that we do this thing where we it's a syntax error where we first decide what we think it could be and then we try to find yeah proofs no, I... for that thing and she was just like if you just stack up all the data as it exists and so her book was called where did the towers go and she's talking about dustification and she, so the she what, what was her deal I, I remember seeing this and i'm sorry cassandra um like uh 
Yeah, I think I had a little clip in there. Yeah, yeah. of the syntax error part because that yeah, because she she yeah. had like a stroke or she had some sort of different deal too. Two right? different two different things you're thinking of because there's the TED talk from the woman who was the neurologist that suffered a stroke, and her video is called "My Stroke of Insight," where one side of her brain shut down, her left side of her brain shut down, and so mm -hmm. she was right brain dominant, for lack of a better word, and she had basically like a spiritual experience, and so and because she was a, I, I believe a neurosurgeon, she was interesting. Able yeah, I guess I can to, combine you know, those two. They're relatable. I could see that. But uh, Judy Wood just, she, it, I, I only used a clip in Sorry Cassandra of her explanation of the syntax error because I was trying to show like other places where that same problem exists, where people start with their conclusion, try and back it up. You know, uh, yeah. it's, yeah, it's problematic. So, you know, she's, she's, you, you, yeah, you're basically like, we're, yeah, you're where you, you make your conclusion and then, then you have your a, evidence, a like try and fit that conclusion as opposed to looking for evidence and basing right. your conclusion around evidence. Yeah. And if so, if you follow 9 11 through just like from, from just the data alone, you end up in a place where you're like, dude, this is not a standard demolition, but what they're telling us is, fucking stupid as hell too so whatever what are you gonna well, do? there was a little yeah. bit of precedent um they also at oklahoma city is another good example mm -hmm. of when a building kind of had uh yeah so i mean there is precedent don't make it seem like 9 11 was some freak thing that hadn't happened before it definitely happened at least one other time well she, that's sure she, she, she's seen examples uh where we've seen uh energy weapons being used that create very specific anomalous occurrences and so she saw a, a trend of that and 9 11 as being one instance and also what's crazy is if you really entertain that you're talking about potentially like oh, free energy yeah, that's being used in a super destructive way when it's like what if we have this technology we could be <laughs> you know who knows yeah. you know? i'm not i'm not why it could be better off as all well. yeah I'm Ooh. not convinced with a lot of the energy weapon stuff, and I and I, I would, but also, but also, it wouldn't surprise me if we were using our resources, uh, you know, where we could be doing something in a beneficial way for everybody. We well, no, we got to we got to find the most <laughs> destructive way to amplify this little gem of genius. I like yeah, the idea yeah. that it was like uh, J.P. Morgan catches Tesla trying to create free energy for the public, and now this yeah. is, this Com is like J.P. Damn it, Morgan. Commie? <laughs> of like finding your cigarettes and making you smoke the whole pack so yeah totally listen together. we're gonna fucking blow up this whole planet you want because three energy? <laughs> i've always believed that i can't help it you know the tunguska event being i seriously do i think the i mean the tunguska event if you look at it the stories yeah. are that the blubber and fat inside of the moose and caribou boiled from the inside out and this is a microwave event which occurred and there's trees that were knocked flat like matched across just for miles in every direction mm -hmm. and if you look at the lines it's on the same line uh longitudinally just of um the island of the ward cliff ward cliff what's it called the uh, you know tesla is that right what's it called the West, the warden cliff tower right it's mm -hmm. on the same um longitude. yes yeah totally so what parallel so the 40th parallel right mm -hmm. and so the idea that this was either an accident is it the 40th test because there's all uh, sorts of wild stuff 40th. that happens it's around the 40th, 40th parallel. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that happens weird on the 40th parallel. Uh, and a lot of it goes back to like Indian lore and like uh, it, it, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. As far as like mm -hmm. where John D supposedly went the first time. Right. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know What's that there was a connection that? there. Yeah, go for looking um, for the Rupus Negra. What's the deal? What was he going? So some, I I don't know if it was. I don't think it was actually him, but it was based on his scrying uh, that some of the earliest the earliest explorers from Queen Elizabeth had visited. Uh, and there there's a there's a plaque, uh, and I think it's the Lenape Shokin people that uh, were. Yeah, it's definitely Lenape, uh, but there's all this stuff going on in the Susquehanna uh, Valley and the 40th parallel. Interesting. Yeah, if you yeah, look up lot, uh, Susquehanna, there's a yeah, there's a, there's a whole whole. But yeah, apparently, and I have notes um, from went to this uh, conference and this guy Ross Ben was speaking to this, uh, and essentially some of the. Uh, the 
magical aspects of the formation of the U.S. and the Constitution and some of the different like things that were implemented uh, at a specific time when our planetary alignment was a certain way uh, in Aries. Um, but yeah, th there is a bunch of interesting stuff tying them together with Benjamin Franklin mm. and the Electric Hellfire Club and all this stuff having <laughs> to do with that 40th pair. Like it was a whole deal. Dude, does does Biden really have a Delaware tattoo on his upper back? Is that true? I don't think so. But the upper sweet. back of his balls. Yeah. The upper, his upper back supposedly has a Delaware tattoo there, which spells out Delaware. And uh, it's just funny. I'm just I'm thinking it's of Wayne's of world. Right? Imagine being magically whisked away to Delaware. I thought it said corn pop. <laughs> <sighs> also, in Okinawa, it looks like the world's about to get pretty bad, right? Because when you have an earthquake, sometimes mm. you have a tsunami. Here's the yeah. water line. It's now down way here. Everyone is. Fleeing Wait, are we looking Okinawa? at something in real time right now? What, what the fuck is happening? What are you saying? Uh, a, in, a, people in Okinawa are fleeing Okinawa because right, right now, now this right is now, today's news. Yeah, okay. This is right. This is happening now. People I are, didn't know. hear about this. People are freaking out because of that earthquake that happened, right? So Okinawa is about to oh, have yeah. um, this a major massive tsunami. tsunami. Massive tsunami. Massive. Oh, that's and, freaking scary. Yeah. So I feel bad for Japan because I love Japan. It's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know. Uh, just what's about to happen man i feel like tomorrow's gonna be crazy this is a lot of stuff a lot of environmental change I mean, is it yeah tomorrow's always crazy right <laughs> <laughs> i mean <it's>, yeah. <laughs> but no that i mean this tomorrow might be crazier than normal uh if we have a, a massive tsunami but it, it, even though even if there was a like is it imminent because I, I know that sometimes there will be tidal things that have, like because you have these waves that can e equal out and the, the the wave dynamics of a planet are very interesting um the, you know the fact that yeah there can be earthquakes and the position of the islands and where you know they're blocked because the the quake was down far enough where there's these other features and other like sea gravel and things that will dissipate the well, force essentially the energy the only the warning was issued only uh, within the last hour, so you know it's going to be a while before we see like everything go down. But it sounds like it's pretty bad. Like they're saying <sighs> something like ten feet water level rise in the Okinawa era area, which is I'm not sure exactly where they're, you know like a piano guy Gigger was saying I'm not sure exactly where they're supposed to go from Okinawa because like what are you gonna do get on a plane the topography is pretty hilly in okinawa right yeah if they can get to the top to the highest mountains then they're probably if they get to the very highest mountains but i don't know if the whole population can get to the highest mountain like the highest hill in okinawa but uh it seems like yeah they're looking to get to planes you know they're trying to evacuate to the third mm. floor i don't know into, I can don't... we can, yeah can you pull up a to topographical map of okinawa that's interesting yeah let's look hold on Images, Okinawa topographical map. Is this so yeah, elevation? right there at the coast, there seems to be high peaks along that whole front part. I don't know how many, what the scale is, how many miles uh, that equates to. But, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Still, it's going to be pretty crazy. It's like everything that they evacuate from, they're going to have to come back to. So it's going to be pretty nuts. Then again, like Japan likes to rebuild all the time. Like they like the to rebuild, Japan... and and they know these things too. Yeah, you know, we, we act like this. it's like they have got to get the word out. No, it's like no, they they've got a pretty good idea of the position they are surrounded in a pretty it's big body of like, water. People talk about like, oh, you can buy a used house in Japan for like ten grand or something like that. But it's like nobody in Japan wants to live in a used house because it's like haunted and it's been used. So they get in like every 20, 30 years, they tear down a neighborhood and then they build houses again. So they're constantly in flux of almost always living in new buildings. You know, that's like the way it's been for the last hundred years. It, and isn't the structural integrity of their house, houses like the, so aren't a lot of the houses built differently and less permanent? Yeah, completely. In a sense too? There's made out of wood 
like to be yeah. there. To or like down. it'll be like paper <laughs> doors and stuff, right? Well, there's yeah. a really interesting for dynamic of here too, where where like um, if you look at like like Notre Dame for example, right? It was mm-hmm. built in like 1100s or something like, mm-hmm. and it's and it's been around since forever. But there's all this debate about how much do we want to repair it because how much of it gets replaced over time. But in reality, it it constantly changes dramatically from like century to century. Whereas the same sort of temples that have been around way longer than Notre Dame are in Japan, but they knock them down and rebuild them constantly. But mm-hmm. like paradoxically they look more they look way closer to what they did so much longer ago because they're in this habit of knock it down rebuild it so they know what it looked like yesterday when they rebuild it today versus when something happens in notre dame and they're like crap we you know we lost the the recipe for ice cubes yeah it's a pretty good uh exploration of the whole one of the worst uh, worst between the west and the east right you know there's a very different it depends actually yeah no, yeah. So like you look at like in the Tibetan versions, they want it to be restored to like it is. You know, they don't care if it. You know, someone from Germany is going to come to re- restore a Tibetan thing. They try not to do like if so there's a big white spot that's all missing. You know, they don't want to redo that white spot because like they're they're not restoring. Then they're creating. They're like trying to imagine what would fit in there. But mm. uh, you know, the Tibetans want that filled in. They want a complete mural that is functional because it's for a purpose. It's not enough that it's just. <laughs> To restore like a history and in right. the west we you know i think it was in the 19th century germans started saying that <laughs> these statues this is what all your all of rome was just as colorful as india is that you know, like, mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> i just saw a bunch of really neat stuff in person at the uh, getty villa museum um the, which all they, of they rome have used a... to be completely colored and then they like bleached it white <sighs> It's crazy. Like this, no one in Rome would have wanted to have a white statue. Imagine when well, all the and, and the eyes. I, I, that yeah. was the one thing I noticed at the Getty Villa. They had all these different interpretations of eyes, hmm. like where where there would be, and you see it even in yeah, where there'd be like hollowed out eyes or eyes that are like uh, yeah, Dude. little things hanging. Uh, uh, very interesting so or interpretations yeah. that are of an, an ec- a, a great antiquity and with uh, these bleached anus versions of rome when you go over there it's like just mm-hmm. white statues completely and it's so deadly like it looks like uh, like ghosts you know this mm-hmm. idea of just but isn't that patina stuff. isn't that like the patina that you want is for so that's and that's because some a german dude in the 19th century said like that the beauty of it was the white and so they actually removed the paint even though the paint had started to wear they had still lots of paint they had they they this is restored from the actual colors that they still have records of from the statue and when you look at it today it's just boring white statue that you've seen right the caesar they're statue. all they're all like that it's egypt it's ancient china it's everywhere it had all this color and then what our depictions are it, or colorful. yeah like uh here i'm sending uh, in the private private thing here's another one i just saw this uh in person nice uh and so that yeah they'd have these depictions that were like it was very much stylized but it wasn't just that, like there were no eyes or there was like once like the, the eyes were very much apart and where the eyes were facing was like a big mm-hmm. part of it mm. yeah, dude like, uh zach you have that greg braden vhs of awaken to zero point <laughs> oh yeah and i, in I that, definitely do in that presentation i don't know how true a lot of that stuff is he talks about the photon belt and all kinds of shit but in that presentation he has a whole thing about hawthor where he's he's sent, he's arguing that that hawthor um was a oh is he grabbing it he's going to show it to us okay so that like that like Hoth, Hoth, hawthor had like these kind of almond eyes right like i don't know like she was i i, I I see one down there that's yeah there you go that shit Dude. so like <laughs> it's, it's so crazy funny. how dirty they get with hathor too is that rich is that richard lewis oh my god <laughs> i know it looks like him kind of, is that, is, he's got a mullet so yeah but uh only but uh the thing the thing that he argues about hathor is he says that that uh when after napoleon had taken over egypt that they just like destroyed all these uh statues of of hathor that they could find and even if it was like uh even in the hieroglyphs supposedly he they like etch it out and he was like we don't know like why did they not want us to know about hathor and he 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 made the argument that hathor was like the one 
um, deity uh, that was at every single temple. And yeah. so it's like the energetic with which this is what he's extrapolating. Who knows? But he's like, this is the energetic you would meet that whatever that whatever deity the te the that te temple was to was like through the energetic of Hathor. But we found the reason why we know what Hathor looks like apparently is because we were able to dig down deeper than before Napoleon uh, conquered. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah. And so I, I don't I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying One this. One of like, the things about Hathor, is Siddhartha's story, and a lot of the Buddhist narrative of like you have to guide people to Nirvana, and their souls keep reincarnating until they eventually can make it. Hathor keeps guiding you to guiding souls to the afterlife and mm -hmm. also she's associated with like besides her boobies you know milk and the calf and well and, and birth it's like that the, even the yeah. corns are like a, the the two fallopian tubes right like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. so and so yeah. the connection was osarsif and akhenaten the idea that mm -hmm. the, the semitic people were in charge of architectural planning and design and for all sorts of rather so high function positions there was lots of shakina or shakina or shakina it was like a fertile uh you know kind of a lost word thing and right? there's a point, Sh and there's Sh a point Sh shakina the can't isn't there's no depiction of, of shakina the closest they say the kabbalist would say that you can get to shakina's form is a rainbow how do i spell shakina uh in english so it, e you're, k yeah it's e usually is how they'd spell it and then shakina and then not. Yeah, Sh Shakina. Yeah, I failed. Shakina, I did it. Ooh, great. Yeah, you got there it. You go. Transliteration, yeah. dwelling or settling. All right, I'll take it. Um, right. So there's like, it... yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, there's the upper and lower Shakina if you're speaking Kabbalistically. So Bina well, is considered yeah, there's, the, there's, the, there's the mother, and Malku is right. the daughter. Yeah. So they're and they're the two Hayes in Tetris. And that's you know Leonard Nimoy of the you know he has his of whole the Jews. He, he has a book uh, called Shakina. But who, yeah, the the uh, live long and prosper. Yeah, his book is is which looks like a V, fantastic. like our V chip we were talking about earlier, right? That's just like photography of 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 really large women, and yeah. I think it's I think it's beautiful that Leonard Nimoy was just such an. But you know, guy. like if you look at yeah. like uh, you you know uh, what what are the, some of the goddesses of very large women like uh, uh, Willendorf? Yeah, yeah. Right, it is what it is, for sure. Yeah, that that well, woman on the cover of his book isn't isn't. I don't think she shows up in the book. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, whatever. Dude, she's like a pine cone. That's epic. Um, Asherah, though, the wife of Yahweh, uh, essentially, or El of Elion, El Elion, like the the there's the mother, the feminine aspect of God, right? And at some point, this is lost by the second temple, by the first, the end of the first temple, right? Right. That's what, they, that's what they if say. the second temple even happened right Ooh. that that's oh, what that that well, that's what that uh book uh that lon milo duquette uh, wrote presupposes in the uh the key it's to funny. solomon's key right all of the adamu kings so when they call the assyrian kings the king's list the king's list are the kings who lived in tents where does it say tent let me find out the 17 kings who lived in yeah tents. who lived in tents yeah well tents are tabernacles my friend that's what that okay. means right. tabernacle so they're that's intense very, spe very special tents you know these are not just your average tents you know exactly right well she's she's like the essence of a room so you're like you the essence of a room isn't the walls the ceiling or the furniture or the floor that make up the boundaries of the room the room itself self is space and so she she's like the indwelling of the space so and then she's attributed to like the holy of holies so it's it's also just the feminine aspect of of god so you you have uh, and the principle is one of receptivity and so yeah that's the idea is that she, it's like there's the the verse where it says the stone that the builders rejected right which the, the freemasons love to reference and, mm -hmm. and bob Mar Mar bob barley alike but yeah, the idea is that in order for us to construct society as it exists, we have to push this principle down to the bottom. And that's Malkut. That's like Malkut isn't in her ultimate place, which is one with Za'er, Teferet, in the center of the tree. So it's that suppression that allows this society to, to um, exist how it does. And so that's the prophecy is that they say it's inevitable no matter what it is that we do in the end she will rise to her rightful place with her unified with her her opposite energy polarity and until that point we have a defect 
in our replication of the tree and that's like essentially like the root of all the problems of society you know and it's, it's mm-hmm. something that's within ourselves not just like men to women but the, what the principles of that are within ourselves you know? yeah right so that's that's temperance and then yeah into the path of uh you know gimel yeah sasamic gimel up uh you know the tree mm-hmm yeah so you have you have that reflection in the lower worlds and just Mm -hmm. like as you have a reflection from the the left reflecting the right and really there's only one pillar and really there's not even that but yeah ultimately but yeah that's the middle pillar right right that yeah there's weird shit like i i trip out on that like the word for lightning in hebrew is like abarak which or no the word for Sirius, the star Sirius is ah, Barack. The word for lightning is Barack, as in like Barack Obama, right? And so there's, there's like when you're looking at the pathways, the the first pathway that ext- extends from Keter because you have the lightning flash extends to the right, right? So it's like is Olive, and so you're like that is the lightning flash. So you're like the Olive is the first emanation, and so and it's coming from a pillar that is is commonly associated with Sirius, especially by European occultists. And so it's interesting that like you just add the olive to the lightning and then you get serious like somehow that feels synchronistic to me and well, yeah, uh, in the, yeah in the same way that wisdom comes before understanding mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah and was, yeah i mean it's it's basically splinter and shredder right because that is like what is the thing so so if you look at crowley's like in like I Ching projection into the tree when he makes the attributions all related to the I Ching. It's like mm. it's like uh Hochma is uh related as metal and uh Bina well, it's, it's is related as wood. Cards. It's also related with the court as cards wood. Too. So I'm like, dude, it's fucking shredder and splinter because it's metal and wood. And then you have like the colors of the ninja turtles, like sure. with their you know, their headbands yeah, or the whatever. Flashing. And the, yeah, yeah Mega Man too, by the way. Ooh. Metal Man and, and Wood Man. And that ties Ooh. into to Golden Dawn's like flashing color thing too, though. Uh it's not yeah. just Crowley's Crowley's deal there. I mean the, the court cards astrologically, they, they serve as a, a, a ability to select a significator based on the like the the zodiac itself, with the, the princess not being included in that in that. So you have like the, the king, right. the queen, and the prince that decide like the whole calendar year of the zodiac. And the and the princess oh, is yeah. like these decans are the four seasons. Right. Yeah, you know, so, this, so the this, the story of it is is, is so hard. We see communicated in a bunch of different places, including like Mario Brothers, like mm-hmm. the way that the uh, Peach, the 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 princess, gets like it's the exile. So they yeah. say as long as Shakina's in exile, Israel's in exile, because every everything becomes fur, fur, further destructive until this this thing within ourselves is reconciled. This this split, and so that's really the the meaning of like the split Adam and why it's the fall. And that like, but ultimately they relate to it. Like this is one, one step. And if, it, if everything, if, if we didn't have this imbalance, we would never like reach another stage. We would just be static. So we need like our failures actually serve some ultimate purpose, not just our failures, but like our ignorance, that there's like an unexpected value to ignorance in our, in our transmutative process, you know, it's pretty deep. Mm. <laughs> mm. Social media is bad for democracy, but it's also making kids sad, and sad kids is bad for democracy. What about that? What do you think about that? Is that real? <laughs> sad kids might be good for democracy. I don't think they have to like. We'll have to ask them, mean. like, "Hey, what what are you sad about?" There. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we might find out a lot. Like, what, oh yeah, it's just democracy. <laughs> what <laughs> like, is yeah. democracy? Like we like this is like the term woman. Like we need to like define our freaking term somehow and be on the same page because yeah. apparently democracy is meaning radically different things to different people. You know, like I, I like are we talking my, a representative democracy? Are we talking? Well, well, yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, you, you, in a lot of people's minds, when you, when they say democracy, they're thinking to themselves majority rules. But if you have, like, if you're talking about like elected officials or whatever, and you're like, dude, the person didn't win the popular, but they're elected, how? Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. but, but I mean, that's like, the thing with representatives. I yeah, get it. About, I get it. It's about, a representative democracy. What about, like, it's like a confusing town. root beer for beer, though. Like, what about, what about Japanese populations in San Francisco where they are the, like, majority in certain areas, but they're forced to be under the gun of Irish cops in the 19th century, or Irish Catholic cops that they can control? Mm-hmm. 
right? Like, I feel like even in a situation where you have majority rule, you might talk about Watts or riot situation, you have white cops, you know, or something like that. And this maybe that's a racial issue instead of a, but really it gets to the communally, communal, communal issue of why we have organized crime. Because organized crime is just like self-representation in a situation where either you are the uh, self-determinant minority or you legitimately are your like local majority, but you're being oppressed because you're colonized, right? And like we, this, the United States mm. is a system of colonization. We're making sure that mm. this area is under. I mean, like you said, in Aptos, we're affected by what happens in Colorado, right? Like this is <laughs> right, right, right. Because the <laughs> fucking news, man. But, the news. Yeah. There's a meme. There's a meme to it, but there's also the bureaucratic enforcement. Okay, this happens, and then we have to try to be kind of ambiguous or universal in our enforcement because otherwise there's prejudice by just trying to say okay well these guys shot each other so now we're gonna focus on them i mean which is right. the right thing to do probably but we're not right but in my in specific. my conspiratorial mind there is there is a huge variable because i frequently see like I, like with the patriot act with like after january 6 it's like they have this shit pre-prepared you're like, dude, yeah. you did not just write that up that quick. This is something that you wanted to push. And now you're either, it's either opportunism, like this thing spontaneously happened. And now you're using an opportunity to put forward Can you the measures you sound, that you want to put forward. You or, like a, this, is not, this, this sounds like a conversation being had between the senator and his wife, why he's not coming to Cape Cod <laughs> this weekend. And she's like, I know you planned this. <laughs> exactly totally and well, you're like get it you're past like, this time right but did you, <laughs> did you did you did you instigate the thing in order to push the thing or did the thing just happen and now you're using it as an so, opportunity so fill me no, in here honey, what happened something both. happened in, in aptos <laughs> Oh, just the oh maybe before you jumped on the call. Yeah, no, I was just saying that things tightened up at my high school following mm -hmm. Columbine. And right. now the, the cops had guns, there's barbed wire on the fences. And that just, to me, it seemed like a counterintuitive way to deal with what every, what people were right. feeling around that my, event. Like, is this what we need? My dad's yeah. friend's a principal and a teacher in Louisiana. And I remember visiting in 2001 and they had, uh, or 2000, just before September 11th, 2000, 2000 and they had, um, you know, removed all the lockers and given kids these see-through backpacks. And they'd have to carry everything from all classes, from class to class to class, in these see-through backpacks. And then they had these metal detectors and these things. And, like, this is even... You know, this is like Louisiana. Like what? Like these kids are not. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to try to shoot a kid in Louisiana, he'd probably pull out his own rifle to shoot you back. Like they were pretty, they were pretty careful about those kinds of things. And just the idea that they were gonna have to worry about that it, it wasn't the issue at that time. But they they did it because that was the the way the law came down. The school would get more money if they invested in security or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. all federal projects that encourage you to like. You, ubiquitous they want to have it be that if you go from one school in one state to another school in another state you have a pretty similar time right so it's it's kind of on one hand it makes sense on the other hand it's super dangerous because you don't have selective um enforcement where it's necessary right mm -hmm. totally hmm. wouldn't yeah. columbine mean peace isn't that like columbia it's like lady columbia it's like that's yeah. like the, all the same well, it's, it's the state flower thing. is the columbine there's more to it. But, but the etymological meaning of the word Columbine, where it comes from, is the same as Columbus. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, or, which, the, or that would be like the goddess Columbia, right? Yeah, yeah goddess exactly. Columbia. Yeah. We've talked about her on the show before. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's just, I, I, it's just the symbolism. And you're like, you're like, is that just the happenstance? Like, Michael, or is that? You, oh, that's not quite yeah. a keynote, but still, that's weird. Um, mm. What about the TikTok? TikTok wants to help. They're going to try to help. They're saying TikTok to launch an online election center to counter misinformation. Because for the, 50, <laughs> for the more than 2 billion people in more than 50 countries who are expected to go to the polls this year, uh, it's expected election, this election center would be used to point people to trusted information. What do you guys yeah. think about that? Oh, I, I, I have a whole opinion on this. Yeah, no, my, 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 my sense of what's happening with, t with TikTok is that TikTok is, is – threatening what the, the you know the 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 D, i'm sorry the dnc and the rnc alike but dnc more overtly uh is look at this point because they have to? because they have a sitting president <laughs> is actually is actually looking to uh control <laughs> uh communication and exposure to information around uh around this this election that's approaching and tiktok is huge 
who's 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 huge what the fuck are we watching we're just this is, is actually Norman my science fair project guns. from uh from ninth grade uh showing how transparent backpacks didn't do anything wow this is wow, you this is great. no it's not me but i, I wish it was yeah. okay. <laughs> i was not in school in ninth grade yeah god bless this kid you know the, all right sorry tiktok i'm just glad you shared that paranoid but the point is that that was cool that kid's cool anyway yeah these elections <laughs> oh yeah, so they're, 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 I mean, R, sorry, RFK is huge on fucking TikTok. Uh, tick, tick, TikTok is being used in various ways to share a bunch of stupid ass videos of people doing dumb shit, just as we'd expect. But it's you also being me, used as, to spread inf information. I'm and there's Kennedy so this yeah. time. I've gone. I'm gone. I'm on your side now. I'm, I'm switching nice. over. I'm doing it. Good. Good. I mean, yeah. That's a, it's he always a long, longer conversation here. Does, I thought that? he wanted to take our guns. No Where man, he, he fucking him. his his son learned to fucking shoot a gun with Hunter S. Thompson at Woody Creek went because RFK was super close with fucking Hunter S. Thompson. He's yeah, talking about he gun like control. We're for our, our Republicans and Democrats are generally no, but it freaked speaking, him out from that day forward. He's like, I'm control. not getting shot with anything. A gun, a vaccine, <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson <laughs> freaked me out and he did <laughs> snuff films. Yeah, well, he's fucking vaccinated. He's just not vaccinated for COVID because it's fucking stupid to do that. But anyway, uh point 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 is uh, I do not see any real evidence that he's going to take away our guns. In fact, I think it's really ironic that you got people on one side saying that he's a left-wing extremist and people on the other sa side saying he's a right-wing extremist and none of them actually being able to give a solid example with a actual actual communication around how either one of those or so it seems like we don't know what to make of a centrist at this point with the that we have shifted the the goalposts yeah. so he's not far. extreme enough he's too extreme he's, yeah exactly it's fucking whatever it is it's they're not going to be happy so yeah. get Gun off the fence man lame, pick though. your extreme Gun control is lame. That's the thing. Centri I agree with paranoid. Centrism, centrism is dangerous. And the idea that we're like, oh, well, we're going to find a practical solution. All you're going to find is a way to exploit the lower classes who cannot figure out, a, I mean, a way to have access to better weaponry to protect themselves, whether it be guns or computers or lawyers or whatever it is. And lawyers, guns and money, like Warren Zevon yeah. says. I mean, the, the elite are always going to have access to everything. And he knows that. And he is one. So, I mean... That's not a concern for the elite. The, the, this is just for like small towns, though. And I think what we need to see won't isn't something you can talk about. Like no election cycle is going to say, "Hey, you need to put guns in the hands of the Black Panthers and in the street gangs and make them representative vigilantes of their local organizations and integrate them into the police force." But that's right. kind of the only answer, realistically. You need to take the people. And this is not that. This is not that wild of a thought. If a kid's not doing well in school, you put him in charge of the group project. They do this all the time, you know? So just take the kid who's at least trying. He cares about his community. I'm just serious. make him a manager. <laughs> make him just a manager. Know how to do the work. <laughs> make him a manager. Make him a manager. You, you, you guys want to see a good movie, you should watch Fear and Loathing in Aspen, which was written and directed by RFK the Third. Really? So, yeah. And with Cheryl Hines. I didn't wow. know it's, that he was... Uh, it's a great movie. movie. That's a sink. Wow. It's, Bobby yeah. It, it, try. It, it, yeah. Wow. So yeah, no, I, I I recommend this movie. I've seen it a couple times. It's really so it's fun. It's not just a documentary; it's a full movie. Okay, Sweet. it's a movie, yeah, about about when Hunter S. Thompson ran for sheriff in Aspen. And so wow. the thing is, is that you have both, you know, RFK Jr. and his son having this relationship with Hunter S. Thompson, and it's one of these things that. I mean, they probably have good reason not to not to talk about it, but they don't have to talk about it. They just make the damn movie, you know. Hunter S. Thompson was my my bandmate and good friend's godfather. Oh, far out. Yeah, Cheryl Hines awesome. is a sink. She herself sinks. <laughs> That's what she does. She's just mm -hmm. synchronizing all day. It's crazy. Yeah, she, so she's a sink, sink conductor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like Larry David's wife, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's the thing. I like I like the idea that we're just like really right, living right. in a real life episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's just like it's like it feels like a se like a elongated season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, it where it's like yeah. and he's like playing Larry back. David, you know. Where's <laughs> everyone right. freaking out? And he's like, "Well, I'm just it's trying to explain himself all the time." Yeah, because no, he asks because everyone keeps saying, "You fucking son of a," and he's like, "No, oh, hey, this is for me." <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. There, there's a Jackie Onassis one on there that I'm um particularly proud of. <laughs> She's in the back did of you, a did limo you... in like the pink dress and everything. It's like, 
I don't know. Is a, is a chef mm-hmm. allowed to compliment his own meal? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I don't know exactly where to find. It. I saw Nev Campbell, Sandra Bullock. That was a little extra. I think that one's a little extra, but that's okay. Uh, J.K. Rowling, good for you. Do you see that? Um, that Eeyore Bach is is brand yeah. new. That's what was he doing with that horse? <laughs> dude, dude. Uh, I like Look, this one. <laughs> I was just on a roll one day. I didn't even get to upload them all, but we've got uh, Robo Bach, Robo Bach, um, I'll be Bach, Bach to Bach, um, Bach and Block. Wow. Uh, like a little, I got an ACDC version. I was like, I don't know. I, I, there was like a stream of consciousness I talked into. Rambach. Ram yeah. Uh, I drew first, come not you, or, or he drew first, come not me. This oh, one God. is the Helen Bach. Bach, Bach and White, I can see. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there he is back in Bach. So, so, should it be back in Bach or Bach in Black? Crosby, Sills, and Bach? I don't know yet. But, mm. <laughs> uh, Mo- Bach. Hey, that's a sync. <laughs> Crosby, Sills, Nash, and Young is is sync, literally spelled out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, uh, rearranged, it's but it's an anagram of sync. Yeah. It's an anagram of sync. Excuse there's, me. Yeah, there's the three ninjas kick Bach. Oh, kick Bach. There she is. There she is as a trans LGBT <laughs> supporter. I like her. She's got a rainbow, uh, apparently, she's got a new book. You guys hear about her new book about cults? About a cult? It's like a fictional uh, thing, but it's all like fucking encoding what the fuck she actually feels is happening in the world. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's out of Britain. It's supposed to be cool. Will J.K. Rowling be arrested? What we know. Um, no. Author J.K. Rowling has sparked speculation she could be arrested after new hate crime law was introduced. No, guy. you're looking. You're looking. You're looking at a. Um, what date is this? Is it? Didn't, no. 12 hours ago? Oh, f- oh shit. Yeah, no. There's, yeah. There, there, so they haven't come up with a ruling of that new law. But the initial incident that happened was excused, and that's what people are freaking out about now. So it's like, oh, well, if they change the, lo- the law, then they can get it. But as the law stands, she's fine. So it's weird. It's like, that's what we do now, I guess. Like, if somebody's not breaking the law, we're like, well, fuck it. We'll, we'll change the law. And then there, there you have it. But I don't, I don't know. Is if that was the case, though, shouldn't it work both ways? Like, if you legalize marijuana in, in a state, shouldn't everyone who was arrested for that crime now be released because we've determined it's not a crime? Yeah. Oh no, it's just everybody after that point. Once we change the law, yeah, it's, it's weird like how ex post the... facto doesn't work the other way. It should. It should definitely. Right. Ex- <laughs> well, I guess not. I don't know. Ex post facto is. Weird, like, yeah, like, that should be, be visited, you know, in a major way. Like uh, that should be like a, you know. Uh, well, it, it's kind of like curfew laws, though, right? Like, like adjustment. The, the problem is that you broke the law, not that you were outside. And like a curfew law is like you broke the law because you went outside after curfew. It wasn't that going outside is wrong. It's just violating the law is wrong. And I think that's the same precedent mm. placed with like these non retroactive drug laws, where it's like it was illegal when you did it, therefore you broke the law when you did it. Therefore, you have a criminal mindset. Mm. Therefore, you need to be rehabilitated. Right. Yeah, I think I think that's a false equivalency, but it might it may or may not be depending on it's what laws you're arguing, talking about yeah, specifically. Right. So the like, law is all about how you argue like, it. What, right. But yeah, because the thing is, is that if you say, why is it that this is no longer illegal? So if you say, oh, we were wrong to have this illegal in the first place is different Which, than now. Now go, we've evolved. Going back to Larry David, mind. you saw that one recently where he gave the whole speech like he was. Re- <laughs> And it was because he was trying to memorize the uh, the uh, the Gettysburg Address while he oh, was yeah. peeing, and so he suddenly became like a great speaker, and he got all these people fired up because he was like on this wavelength of learning, like he's just like saying these things, like you know, you, you, the confidence, all of it. It's all about these like magic words, you, you know, to get the people to do these things. And so, like, he, yeah, he's finding himself as this like on the fool's journey through this season specifically like you, you know we'll we'll see if he has like uh you, you know his feather his heart weight against the feather you know in the 42 pr- principles of egyptian ma'at is, is uh-huh. you know in his last episode he's like oh shit i'm an asshole well that was kind of the last episode of seinfeld anyway right they all went to jail so is it that the last episode of curb is going to be the uh, the same thing i don't know uh, he's kind of a one trick pony that guy yeah. Well, it's not his fault but, he didn't do that. That was that was Seinfeld's fault. That's why I think he's doing it. I think he's sore about how it was done poorly, and he wants to do it right. Like, right. If you were to do it, this is how you're supposed to do it. Um, what's going on with the, the Club of Rome? They had this, like, new chart. I was trying to get a nice, big, wide picture of it. It's, like, impossible, this picture, to fill the screen. But Club of Rome wants to reduce 
vehicle emissions, appliance emissions. They want to in introduce carbon taxes. There's a goal for absolute zero carbon emissions by of uh, commerce, flying and shipping and fossil fuel by 2050. Do you, what do you think? I mean, is this just like Al Gore nonsense? Or are we like really about to hit a control of CO2, a control of like fuel expenditure? Because then they can, this is every, you can only choose to do anything if you have access to resources and if they can reduce your right to resources. That's we, that's that's what they want for the future. Absolutely. Well, There's yeah, no, if you, like, if you believe in climate change, like you got to, you know. No, that's how they do it. They get you to accept one. If you accept one outrageous thing, then everything else follows. And it's like kind of what I was saying earlier about like that syntax error. Mm -hmm. That so if you if you establish, if you if you get people to the point where you're like we are responsible for this and we know the degree. Like as it stands, apparently we don't really know the degree to which we actually affect the the, the climate. I think we probably do. We've got a pretty some, good idea to, to, to some amount. <laughs> got, like this last apophysine, like uh, like you you've seen the ice samples that they took in this really remote right, but you, lake. We do not know that the they can show in the last hundred years behavior. that it's like no, no. The, a hundred years, Zach, things change over thousands of years. And sure. The, and so they've been able to see because of the remoteness of this one lake where they took this ice core sample, like the extreme degree that in those hundred years. Like not not direct yeah, like expand, pollution. You got to expand over a thousand years because you might be looking at CO two emission. Like water vapor produces ten times as much ozone depletion and methane gas as it, humans do. Sure, right? but There's yeah, if we're looking emission. at our progress and the bell curve is a bell curve. Is we have more curve, CO two emission you know. from a single volcano than we do from about a hundred about twenty years of human. Uh, uh, CO2 production, like crazy well, amounts of CO2 that, are released from volcanoes. That raises a really good point that we should, if anyone really cares enough about the environment, we should be trying to pass laws against volcanoes and solar flares because anything <laughs> short of that is really just a drop in the bucket, is it yeah, not? Yeah, a universal ban, though. Hmm. I don't think limits are going to work. We got to tell people. It is. So, right. So if you get people to, if you can get to the point where you say, this is settled science, we know the degree to which we're affecting the environment and it's this much with the carbon do, do not like there's no way that there isn't an incentive for a carbon tax by powers that be they absolutely want a carbon tax because it gives an excuse to look at every single thing in your life that you're doing that you're up to what do you what do you do there there's such a perverse incentive there we've seen all the evidence for that already like i don't know that is, that is on its own. I don't know how it's debatable. Like that, there's not an ambition towards a carbon tax to give an excuse to have surveillance on a mass scale, also globally. Because if it's a world problem, it's for the good of the planet. There's no end to the lengths that they can go. Well, for, it's it's a that. secular version of original sin. It's like you don't even have to believe in the Bible anymore. <clears throat> like you've got original sin just because every time you breathe out, you've just killed grandma somewhere. Totally, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's wow, it's it, it, even even if there was some truth to it, does it justify? Does it justify? Is, is that the best way to deal with it anyway? Because it seems like the best way to deal with it would be more along the lines of soil and how do we direct uh, cattle and like just basically like uh, you know treating. It seems areas like it's hurting cats. It seems like it's hurting cats. The, her, her, you're, we're, we're harming Who's hurting cats? Cats? No, we're, not harming them, the but like yeah. you, you know, <laughs> more like cats. trying to you know uh, <laughs> corral cats. You know, it's 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 an impossible task, and mm. and so you, you know, it very well could be. <laughs> you know, I heard these cats. I don't know. I don't think it is. I think that if you can control the systems of industry and you, this is like the perfect plan because then you can, it's like central planning while still allowing for free enterprise. Like, Oh, you want to use these units and you can do things with these units. Well, the value will be based on, you know, the amount of in return and investment we're getting from people doing things. If someone else is using those units better than you, according to their needs, we can give it to them instead of to you. And so all of a sudden right. you've got no right to, resources beyond those which they say okay everyone's going to be allowed these amount of resources but you right. saw that map i don't know if you saw it, it said 60 percent of uh zero percent emissions by 2050 but zero um but 60 percent of the car is gone like in terms of people driving or having access to vehicles of any kind um that also equates with lowering the population but they want to have as probably between 60 percent of the population drop and uh a certain amount of the population that's just always inside 
basically living under house arrest forever, right? Like you're isolated, you don't leave your towns, 15 minute cities. And it seems mm -hmm. like that's coming really quickly. I mean, we're already seeing these emerge. Oh, yeah. People are happy to live in a 15 minute city. Totally. Yeah. Well, they are they are they happy to in conceptually until you get the thing. And so that's kind of that's the the deeper communication in Zohar is that there's a, a movement towards this thing where you have just a few people in charge of everybody. But then once that's actually established, the whole thing flips on its head because people don't actually want it. It's just like, dude, this is all relying upon all the levels of the pyramid uh, in complying with it. And then once it's actually in place, to fuck it. it they, they don't no longer have power. So it's actually consolidating power is actually ultimately losing power, but you won't see that until the very end. So it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's kind of twisted. But is there is there any chance that fifteen minute cities could end up backfiring into a net positive where it like forces communities to bond together again? Where like right now you don't even talk to your neighbor, but all of a sudden if like you and everyone within a fifteen minute radius is all forced to live in the same isn't kind that of the idea? Hellscape. Right. Well, I mean part of it but i think that another part of it too is that they might unintentionally start raising like 15 minute militias all over the place <laughs> yeah well, you got the minute yeah. men you get the 15 minute men yeah <laughs> okay that's a better one <laughs> <laughs> 15 minute men. Dude, that's, 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 a, that's a cult in the making yeah so is that part of the idea further isolation keeping people from each other mm -hmm. you're only going to be able to protect your city they can lock your city up Right, right. They can lock wall, your, right? your whole city up. Yeah, it's it's a strategic. It's, it's Epcot. Thing. This is literally what totally. Epcot was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Or Waco. <laughs> Sorry. The twenty six original first fifteen minute men. <laughs> That's the band. We're getting the band back together. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like we're yeah we're headed towards singularity on on one level but also complete disconnection because if you're not able to get access to resources i mean taiwan's having problems not just environmental i keep thinking about my grandparent my great grandparents ordered these stained glass windows and they didn't arrive from world war one until after world war ii sometime like near 1955 or something like that it took like decades mm -hmm. because of all the wars and things that happened and how that factory shut down and then eventually it was rebuilt and then people started working again but it could we could very quickly have you know the end of a fabrication plant and then that's the last time we see gpus or something like that right there's also like just the idea of an open air prison and so it's it's controversial or it has been controversial to relate to gaza as such but Ga gaza is is by definition in an open air prison and has been uh because of all the surrounding countries as well including egypt and syria so and, and they all have their own reasons for for keeping it that way. But I I could see kind of a situation where we end up with like whole like sections of the country. Like, do you remember that like the image that came with that Agenda Twenty One book from nineteen ninety four? Whenever everyone met up for Agenda Twenty One, and it was like what the country was gonna like in order to like offset their predictions of the future. Like they had this whole, there's like the world's top scientists, supposedly, along with Gorbachev and all these people. If you look up Agenda 21 map, maybe it'll show up. But it was like looking at how much of the of the, the country would be like cut off from like anybody that like only like, like, oh, this, uh, it's uh, go, go back to that. to the Oh, yeah, there it was. It's the one with all of the shit going on. Yeah, there that one. Yeah, so in this map, so this was actually in the book. So this isn't like something conspiracy theorists came up with. This is the conspiracy theorists in government and in, uh, uh, you know, the science realm coming up with this idea for how we would basically uh, deny access to all of these parts of the country. I think it's, so what are we looking at? Uh, yeah, so where it's red, it's like core reserves and corridors, little to no human use. And so, like, this was actually pitched as, like, what they want to do. When people would talk about Agenda 21 and people would be like, oh, you conspiracy theorists, it's like, no, it is a book. It's like Klaus Schwab's book of the Great Reset, where you're like, no, they literally tell you exactly what they're planning. And so, and so Agenda 21 actually affected uh, people on a, on a uh, like, a, a, a more local level because you get these measures that would be passed down and ordinances and shit that were actually ultimately tied to agenda 21 but it gets placed on somebody's desk and they're like a bureaucrat they don't even know like why this is really here 
you know? And so like, and it doesn't stop with Agenda 21. It's also like Agenda 21 is like oddly connected to Event 201, like in terms of like where you have this kind of like projected strategy of how you're going to deal with the disaster, but there's implication that they actually want this disaster to happen so they can implement the very things that they want to be opportunists about. Well, I, I, I guess that's... Cape Cod. I know that, you made yeah. had this planned. Sorry. <laughs> that's a pretty big leap though from having a preparedness drill to like them wanting to have that you know right except know. That, except that like, there is actually loads of specific examples with agenda 21 that got implemented on local levels throughout the country and uh there's actually a presentation a three, well, three plus I mean, if you hour look presentation at, like, the walking that, dead uh, the way um, it lines up with that too and like it, i mean it's yeah what what it's, it's dude uh, th this is like top world leaders meeting with top world scientists publishing this book that literally spells out exactly what they plan to do explicitly it's not a theory like that's what i'm saying no like, I, I i get that no this is yeah. like the, this is the uh implementation of the right but they also meet resistance the whole way so they're not going to be able to achieve this extreme thing that they're that they're shooting for. And what it's also like there's a psychological angle that's the same way that we accept high gas prices that actually like Hunter S. Thompson talked about in the Rum Diary, where it's like, suppose you want to like build on an island that's like got no structures on it and it's like protected. And then you say, Oh, we want a hotel there. And really all you ever wanted was one hotel. But when you pitch it to them, you're like, tell them we want 10 hotels. And they're like, 10 hotels? That's outrageous. And then you're like, fight over that. And then eventually you're like, well, what if it was just one hotel? But really one hotel is what you really wanted in the first place. But you would have liked 10 hotels. It's just that, like- that, That's what I'm saying. It's like herding way. cats. Yeah. It's, it's like the same same thing. You're <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you have to do these things to, yeah. I think, you, you know, Gen 21 was interesting because you had generations of kids that were, they're like, okay, we can get directly to the kids. And so within 20 years, that'll be normal for them. And the people that were reading it at the time was very common is you come up with a plan. Everyone comes with a plan. People argue over plans. That's not a big deal. Um, yeah. But if your plan gets implemented, you're excited. Whether or not it's 201 or if it's Agenda 21, if you're like, thank God I had this emulated software that predicts what's going to happen and it's going to save the world like you're going to be very grateful that your plan was something close to reality subconsciously or not even if you're like oh it's such a horrible thing it's better mm -hmm. because we saw it coming and so there's that but right. also the idea that if you're arguing over what's going to happen now well yeah people are going to give and pull and there's going to be a lot of like tug of war but if you're arguing mm -hmm. about what's going to happen in 20 years and you're mm -hmm. educating these kids about those issues that's their epistemology. That's their entire frame of reference. And you can debunk or you can lay down a fire line against anything that their parents are saying because you can kind of predict what people are saying that generally are going to be in uh, some a di 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 in contrast from what you're uh, being taught. Like your parents are teaching you one thing, the society is pushing for another goal. And we've seen how that works out. People just think their parents are mm -hmm. fools from a former generation that don't, especially with the technological disconnect it was very easy to say okay well yeah like they just they're just children of god you know, don't worry about the older people we'll just we'll just implement this plan when they're dead and i think that's happening very quickly we're seeing agenda 21 is the way of things now that didn't really require as much of a vote as a change in consciousness yeah i agree with all that yeah totally so yeah it's like a, a boomer thing right it's the true cancer of Operation 69. Well, that's the, the thing is like boomers aren't like boomers are really dynamic, like d diverse. Like you've got a lot of different kinds of boomers and the ones that we think about are the ones that survived. And the ones that survived, they could have died. You know what I mean? Like a lot of them were at, the, boomers. You had Woodstock, Vietnam, all these. So say Operation Ultra. 69. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that like there are those that survived, a lot of the ones that we interact with are the ones that didn't rot their brains or didn't get assassinated or didn't become mind control victims or stayed away from those parties, you know, and there's like a bunch of options, even the cocaine and the crack and amphetamines. Yeah. I mean, even, even us, right. I mean, we're, we're of a generation where we actually experience what privacy was like, like, and if you've never experienced something, you don't know what you're like to value it. How can you value something that you've never actually had? Like, you know, usually people don't do that. So it's like, and th yeah, that, that connects to all kinds of things. That's like Roe versus Wade. Like Roe versus Wade was a privacy, was because of privacy. 
And that's why freaking they'll, you'll if you want to see a liberal's head explode, show them what freaking uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg had to say about Roe versus Wade and how vulnerable it was. And it was like, and they would every freaking they would never codify Roe versus Wade because they could no longer use it as a talking point when they're trying to get elected. So they didn't want to do that. But then all of our values shifted. I'm not saying this is the only reason what happened to Roe versus Wade is what happened to it. But that was what Ruth Bader Ginsburg was arguing when she was like, this is a very vulnerable thing because it's based on, on values that are dissipating. Like we no longer care about privacy like we used to. You can't make that same argument and have it like mm-hmm. affect people it like it did at the thing. time. It's Yeah, it's a different different yeah. argument yeah totally yeah but you know I mean, like it was, yeah. well, it was weird in like croatia and stuff because the value of privacy is less i mean it really is because it wasn't as important as long as you're able to do your things they don't really care as much <laughs> dude something says here they're like boomers bought their first house for 34.99 in a basket of berries yeah <laughs> it's totally. like that's a thing and it like... came with a slave <laughs> who is our their kid yeah go to your go clean the dishes yeah yeah boomerism i don't know uh we're all headed to a weird time there's a lot of election cycle stuff that's happening like is there anything else that you were thinking of happening like rfk is about to do another oh what i could you, go off on a, on a bunch of things there i almost feel like that's like we like that's a bigger conversation like to even like put my foot in the water it's like i kind of want to dive in but like you dive know, in for the, a second we got we got i'll i'll go for five extra Let's well it's really fun to watch them on C, on cnn because they're just like they're the, 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 watching that lady shuffle her papers and fiddle with her pen when she's like she because she's saying shit in response to what she's saying and she is not expecting it so he's overtly catching her off guard with his responses. And then they dedicated like five minutes after the end of this 26 minute thing or whatever it was to just like, okay, now we're gonna go back over everything in this pre-recorded thing that he said and try and debunk it. And they did a really like flimsy job of that in my opinion. So like, it's just, you could, it's just, there's such a thin veneer. It's like um, of their attempt to try and like, kind of like squash what's being exposed there like he names blackrock and vanguard because he's in litigation with them and like i could if you want to talk about like israel stuff i'm like there's shit that people are not talking about because they're listening to his opinion and they're reacting to that but then if you look at actually like what is he doing like as far as like black rock is concerned and how that relates to israel you're like dude he's like go going at the freaking the source of the problem while at the same time like trying to counterbalance people had called him an anti-semite so it's like because of uh, a recording from a dinner conversation that he had about freaking bioweapons and so like the media went crazy with anti-semite anti-semite and he's like he has this connection with his dad's relationship with israel too and his dad was killed by a palestinian man who he's been trying to get out of prison for years and, and not he's not the only one in his family who's been trying to do that. She brings up, oh, members of your family, they talk shit about you, they don't like you. And then it's like, dude, he's got 140 plus people that went to his last gathering at his house who are members of his family. The four that aren't down are the people who actually have like a direct connection to the sitting president along with the very companies he's in litigation against. So they have their own like monetary and political reasons for objecting to him so it's just like it gets it's it's all so twisted um and yeah uh, yeah anyway i i, I actually really <laughs> li- like a lot of the things that he's sa- saying on certain topics but i can see that i ca- that i also can see people's justification for their reactions but i'm just like dude he's also coming up against what he perceives with what's happening with all the the liberals on campuses who are protesting free palestine that they're just jumping in on a topic that they really have very little context for besides a moral feeling and they don't know the full fucking history of how we got here in the first place so while i agree with about like 95 percent of what he says on on israel i'm also like he is reacting to this other movement that's happening simultaneously because he's like that's what he does like if he sees like like herd mentality going in a certain direction he's like well let me tell you what your blind spots and people are reacting to him pointing that out but it's like and understandably so but it's like dude because he's yeah people cannot handle fucking nuance right now i'll tell you that especially with these kind of topics so yeah that's gonna be pretty interesting 
it's more and more interesting watching RFK because it reminds me a lot of the way Trump was when he was running because it's kind of just at the first time around and it's got that kind of vibe. It's like, well, you know, who cares? But I got to do this because if I don't do this, I'm lazy. And so I like that. I like that he's, you know, he's not doing it necessarily because he has to win, but he's doing it because he I has wish he'd stay it. the fuck away from that one rabbi, Rabbi Shmuley, the butt plug rabbi. I'm like, why are you fucking talking to this guy at all? So like, even for me, like I'm, I'm like super pro RFK, but I'm like, I'm like, why the fuck are you even giving this guy the time of day? Like, I don't understand. And I'm just like, it's disappointing to watch, but like, I still agree with a lot of what he says. It's just, there's corollaries. And every so often, RFK has been communicating those corollaries that you'll never hear from Trump and you'll never hear from Biden as far as uh, Israel is concerned. Like RFK has explicitly said that the settlements on the West Bank are illegal both by Israeli law and international law and they shouldn't have fucking done that. And it's like that for me, I'm like, oh, you, you said the corollary. You said the, the other thing. Thank you. You know, but it's like pe people are reacting because they're not they're, they're Instead of highlighting those corollaries they're actually like ignoring them and just focusing on on little clips you know of things that he said you know so and it's it, a lot of this has to do with that hamas and the Pal and palestine the palestinians and hamas they're two different things they were they were elected in 2006 there's only been one election so we're saying oh they were democratically elected well they won by three fucking points and they've been making they've been just screwing over the palestinians since they've been in power Palestine is getting screwed by Israel, it's getting screwed by Hamas, it's getting screwed by Egypt, and it's getting screwed by freaking Sy Syria. They're, and it's, it's the, you know, and it's, it's tough because historically, like Jewish people, they want to like be like, look, we were victims of some terrible things. And it's like the Palestinians are fucking victims too, but they're like victims of everybody. It's so hardcore. Um, so yeah, anyway. I'm trying to find Zach's links. All I could find was Zachtron. Zach, where's your... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, there's uh, my studio, Bright Star Studios Golden. Oh, that's I right. Think, I had that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's right on. You can even go right where, you, yeah, right where you're at. You're I just at. had it's, it a second it's ago. It's in my... Uh, I swear it was here. It was in my uh, bio, basically, you know. There you go. Wait, <laughs> uh, boom, did it. Told you. I have it. There it is. My, and my Facebook is really probably... A, that'll You can get to me through there now, too. It's, yeah, the, the site is... Uh, uh, or or the uh, Instagram that you haven't had up. I'm in Bright Star Studios is right on the top there, and that's that's me playing mini golf. If you take music seriously, you should probably get in touch with Zach because Zach takes music pretty seriously. I do. Like, yeah, come record in my studio. Sound. Noise and sound in general, like he'll get the most serious recording. And also his AI art. I was looking for your page with all of these. Oh, the AI art is uh, Digital Chutney 420. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I, there we go. Dude, yeah, there's a lot of really good going on here. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that... <laughs> Zach, you kind of like are like the epitome of like always record. Like, guys, got to understand. Like, Zach has been to my house uh, a couple times. Yeah, and uh, a couple different houses, and he brings his recording equipment with him, and he's just like record. He like go off uh, like by the beach and just like record sounds on the cliffs and like bring them home and be like, I'm gonna play with this and do different things with it. It's like it's it's a, he he is a, a true always recorder. This That's guy. yeah, yeah. I always always record in that sense. It's great. Yeah, the, what, what we can do, uh, the, what the technology allows for now, and just like making art. <laughs> I did this whole series of uh, like Muppets. It was like this. Uh, it's based on the the Temple of uh, Psychic Youth. But you know, dude, that's like, terrifying. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this all really happened. I'm convinced. This is uh, this is from the real world, and we just haven't gotten to see it yet. But this is yeah, real. no, these are real glam rock <laughs> Muppets that uh, <laughs> you could have been uh, conceived <laughs> watching. You know, your parents. <laughs> <There's some. laughs> make sure you go to mk ultrasound check out david charles plate if you check out um media is it highlights or media media highlights highlights that's where you get his highlights for easy access you got um londo ray's honeymoon and polanski's bitter moon because you that's know so good they had to go together this is like perfect no it's it's incredible and actually if you look at like i just start the album the second that the movie starts and the way that the 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 last song which is honeymoon like comes back around after two rounds at the end so the thing makes two complete rounds we watched this the, together the first in person. song at the end 
it's 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 out of control like a, like a lot of these syncs it's like if you watch it all the way through and you actually know the album especially you're like wait did it really just fit into it like a slot like that it's insane it's it's crazy yeah. so yeah i i'm convinced that that this album from lana del rey was an open letter to emmanuel signer a, um, yeah open love letter to return back to california. yeah like come to fucking california fuck like Which, like if... that one is actually re like it's there's the reprise <laughs> in the norman fucking rockwell record come yes. to california <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like she, yeah it's it's the reprise in that one even it's uh yeah yeah so like right here in the shot that you're looking at right there where she's looking out the plane window like her like Roman her, Polanski's her, her, wife. her husband bails on her he fakes a heart attack and she like ends up she's all sad here because she's like taking off on a plane without him but she's looking at a magazine showing where she's going to someplace tropical and then she comes back all empowered and so it's like in this scene you have this song that's uh uh basically all I want to do is get high on the beach but bye baby baby bye bye and so she's like, it's like a different, like you, if you're just watching the movie, you're just like, oh, that's a bummer. But it's like, actually something really good is happening for her with that. It's like, and this movie uh, has like two sides to it. There's like where he, where the, the so it's Peter Coyote telling the story to Hugh Grant. So it's just loaded with controversy because you got Polanski and Hugh Grant who are both steeped in their shit, right? And like, and Hugh, even just Hugh, in the language, like the Coyote Lounge is like the last place that Sharon Tate ate at, and you got Peter Coyote. Oh, dude, it's plays, crazy! Like, yeah, it, it goes it, on and on and on for days with shit like that. And then it also relates to the other sync with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Norman fucking Rockwell. But yeah. the thing is, is that this this movie actually like flips on itself where he's torturing her, Peter Coyote's torturing Emmanuel Siner, and then Emmanuel Siner's torturing peter coyote and the album making two rounds actually lines up with that shift in this really weird way like mm -hmm. it's 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 so on point it's ridiculous but yeah bitter bitter, bitter honeymoon and it's really <laughs> slow some some sync films like it's like it goes to a rhythm that's like it just goes and it's really fast so it's easy to do it bitter honeymoon is like you're on a ship and so it's like yeah. slow it's very <laughs> bizarre because it most things the way they sync and work together it's like this like saccharine, slow, melancholy, beautiful thing that it does. Exactly. Dude, right, Zach, right, right. Zach gets it. You've seen it. Yeah, no, yeah. I've watched this on we Acid watched a it, We watched it too. together. We watched it together at, uh, when I was out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we watched, we, we, well, <laughs> yeah. we watched a bunch, so I can't yeah. remember all the ones well, we that watched. that was definitely you know? one. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, that was, yeah, uh, yeah that was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, make sure you guys check out Honeymoon and Bitter Moon because, like, I'm gonna be watching that later. That sounds cool. I like that. I just, awesome. just one more thing. I just had uh, Sync Film kind of explode a little bit, which was uh, Eyes Wide Shut with um, uh, You Want It Darker, Leonard Cohen's last album. That's a good so, like, I just shared it in the right place and I got, like, you know, like, uh, whatever it was, uh, 150,000 views in a day or something. Oh, it was like, really? st stoked me out. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. But, yeah. yeah, some of these just, are pretty high. You should get uh, if you got enough of a view count, you should probably get promoted pretty soon. What was it me. the part in the in the like t in the chamber with the masks? Like you want it darker? <laughs> was that where it, the like the the part that you shared? That well, I mean, I've just shared the full sync film on Twitter, and that oh, was okay. what got the views. But I didn't then, know if it was like a TikTok, like you know. No, oh, that, well, the there was Twitter, there was a video a video edit that was made by a member of the sync community. What's his name? Out of sight, out of mind. But it's actually below the video. If you go to that one on Twitter, it's actually one of the um, the tweet responses. But uh, actually, that song "You Want It Darker" that's the first song of the album. Actually, when it repeats one of those times, is is directly in alignment with the ritual scene. Yeah, with, no, I've seen know. I've seen it. Yeah, I thought I remembered. Yeah, like you want it darker. Yeah, yeah it's, it works, <laughs> it's works crazy, out really yeah. well yeah anyway enough here about go, me right thanks here. here it is yeah. and then the post is somewhere in here Linus or something uh it's yeah right above if uh, if you go go up see that one that says uh oh there oh, uh, eyes wide shut you want a darker sync flicks edit so that's the one that was so there was a um you see it it's on youtube oh this one here okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah that one yeah. Sweet. So anyway, that 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 was a, a really cool edit, and all it is 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 this guy took the uh, JJ Draw was that who did it? Uh, where he 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 uh, yeah, you got to go to it, I guess. It's telling you now, uh, but uh, he took just clips from the from the times where this song plays in the sync because it makes four rounds. So he took 
just exactly as it happens to land on its own and then edited those together to form this kind of music video for it. It's really good. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting okay. symmetry. Yeah, it's cool. Also, make sure you go to Paranoid American, who just has Chosen One Two out right now, and you burr, burr, burr. cool and uh, Frazzle Drip, which I still love. Dude, your event looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, All those guys, like, is that in Florida? It was in Florida, and funny enough, it was like right outside the villages, which is known for where all the old people go to get STDs. We gotta go um, to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> there was a really interesting mix of people that were diehard Tripoli fans and people that were just like, "There's nothing else to do in this little area of town." And <laughs> there were some routines that Sam went into, and you could see the people that that weren't there for Sam because they would get up and just walk out pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Good goodbye, you know. Yeah, that looks but like yeah, a blast. Cool. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to come to Florida and visit. And you're gonna have to come to California. We're gonna. Have to well, it sounds like we're gonna try and make again. it an ongoing thing because it, it turned out like way better than anyone expected it to. Epic. Cool. Sweet. And then, um, yeah, and I showed Zach's thing, but make sure you go to TartaryNova.com, join the Discord, get involved, uh, send us information that you're interested in, and if you're, you know, surviving member of post traumatic stress from CIA mind control, you know. <laughs> There's still hope for you. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. All right. Love you all. Peace. Hello. Welcome to the Exatos.